in the Sun Belt, and man, they have their hands full tonight because the North Texas, uh, number one in the Sun Belt, number eight in the country in offense, unbelievable. So these two teams will go at it as defense against offense. When you talk offense for North Texas, got a great young quarterback with one about a receiver by the name of Casey Fitzgerald. He has been all over the field. Well, incredible breakout year for number 87 here, Casey Fitzgerald. Uh, here he's going 99 yards against Louisiana Monroe. 85 catches already this year. A lot of guys don't get that many in a whole career. And I'll tell you, the safety for Arkansas State, Tyrell Johnson right here, he is a senior. He is the all-time leading tackler in the Sun Belt. He is a good one. He is a pro prospect. In fact, there are a lot of scouts here tonight looking at him. Uh, he's really fun to watch. That's the matchup, Tyrell Johnson, Casey Fitzgerald. I'd have to agree that's going to be a great matchup tonight. Let's take a look at our Golden Plate keys to the game. Coach, let's start with North Texas. Well, certainly for North Texas, uh, they have to hold Arkansas State to 4.0 per rush or under that. They're giving up an average of 6.1 on the season. They really have to pick up the pace there. And, uh, you know, they can have no more than two to three and outs in the whole football game. Uh, and, and Todd Dodge does a good job of keeping track of that stat, and that's a big stat for this offense. How about Arkansas State? What do the Indians have to do? Well, I think for Arkansas State, first, obviously, they have to protect Corey Leonard. Uh, they're dead last in the Sun Belt Conference in sacks. They've given up 36 sacks this season, so they have to do a better job of protecting him. And they have to put North Texas in third and long situations. If they don't do that with this controlled passing game, Sam, uh, it'll be a long night for them. Coach, you've been through this before. 17 seniors bid goodbye. Is it an emotional type night for this team that'll kick off to North Texas? Hey, when, when your mom and dad are here and this is your last game you're going to play in this stadium after, you know, and most of these kids are redshirt seniors, uh, it's very emotional. And as a coach, you would always expect them to play extremely well. Brian Sheffield will be kicking off for ASU. He's kicking deep to North Texas. They won the toss of the coin, elected to receive the football. They've got some good ones back there. Micah Mosley, along with Antoine Bush, normally are back there. And let's see where they kick it. It'll go to the far sideline and out of bounds. The new rule is that they can go ahead and take it at the 35 or ask for a five yard penalty and a re kick. But where that ball goes out of bounds, I'm not sure what they'll do. North Texas is discussing right now. Yeah, I, I would think that they would take it on the 35. I think the odds are with that. Matt Leffler will be our third voice on our broadcast team tonight, our referee for tonight. Well, one of the guys we talked about on the pregame show, of course, was the player of the week in Giovanni Visa is a young man that uh, kind of came out of nowhere, Coach, but boy, is he everywhere now. How about seven touchdown passes in the first half? That ties the NCAA all-time record. He's a true freshman. You will not have a lot of time to catch your breath on the North Texas offense. They come at you in waves, and again, they'll throw about 75% of the time, and they'll try there, but nobody to throw to. Visa will carry for three yards. Let's take a look at the region starting lineup. Here's the way they'll go. A former national rushing champion, Thomas, along with Jabril and uh, Fitzgerald, Stickler, and Jackson are the wideouts. Up front, you'll be looking at a front line that only has Adam Viargas as the only starter over uh, one year, other than the year they started this year for North Texas. A young team on the region's bank starting lineup for the Mean Green. Coach, a third and seven. Every down's a passing down. Yeah, and of course, uh, they're looking all to the sideline because Todd Dodge himself will call the audibles from the sideline. Out of the shotgun, Visa. Looking near sideline, swings it out near side. He's got it in the hands of Stickler. And Stickler draws a crowd as he's taken back to the 25. The Regents Bank starting lineup. Up front, Arkansas State. They'll go into 3-4. Hickman and Carrington, good rushers on the outside. Mays, good down the middle. Here's the linebackers. Ben Owens has been coming on like gangbusters. Third in the conference, though, is McKinnon in tackles. And the secondary, you see the way they'll go there with Burns, Johnson. They'll have the free safeties, and they'll have their work cut out for them tonight against North Texas Regents Bank defensive starting lineup for ASU. Third down in five. Of course, Sam, when we expect Arkansas State to be in a dime defense, that's six defensive backs, one linebacker, and, of course, four down linemen. We think we'll see that most of the night. He's a back in the pocket. Always looking deep. Goes underneath, and there's Fitzgerald. He takes it out to the near the 45, and it'll depend on the spot if he gets the first down or not on the third down play. 
Yeah, and this is exactly what we spoke of in the uh, as one of the keys to the game to keep them over third and five. This is right at third and five, and they convert that a high percentage of the time. You've got to get them in third and five, third and eight, third and ten. Coach, interesting enough, even despite the record of only one victory by North Texas, they lead the conference in time of possession with the football, so they have stretched out a lot of drives. Well, it, you know, it's a little bit of a misnomer that a passing offense can't control. Be, you know, this passing offense controls the ball because it's a short possession type passing offense. They don't do this much when they do. They're somewhat effective over the 50 yard line down to the 49 and that is Jamario Thomas. Thomas stepped in his freshman year and led the nation in rushing with over 1800 yards rushing. The only guy he was battling was Adrian Peterson at Oklahoma and he beat him that year. That was quite a race to the finish. Good gain of the play. Beza swings it out to the right side, gets it to Fitzgerald, and he's caught for a loss of two. Coach, they're trying to use him a little more inside than just outside this year, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And, uh, and of course, wow, what a play that was by Tyrell Johnson, and that's what these scouts are looking for. He is a great open field tackler. But, yes, they have moved, moved Fitzgerald inside so he could be more effective against blitzes. Fitzgerald is just a walk on. The only thing he's done is ranks third in the nation in number of receptions per game at 9.4. You'd like to have a couple of walk ons like that every year, wouldn't wow. you? Wow, unbelievable. Third down, six yards needed here by the Mean Green. Young man out of San Antonio, Alamo Heights. Visa throws a strike to the outside, knocked away. Good lean in that time, and they got a good one by MD Jennings. To knock it away on the far sideline. Incomplete brings up a fourth down. Third yeah, down, excuse you know, me. You know, I, I really thought that this was a pretty good defensive play. Uh, you know, it, uh, there really wasn't that much contact at all, but they're going to get them on it. And again, uh, take a look at it now. You make the call. Was this, was he interfered with right here? Uh, you know what? Yes, it, second, second thought. He was there a little Pass bit early. Fair. That's a good call. On the defense, number 20. That's a spot foul, automatic, first down. So North Texas keeps their drive alive with the interference call, and they move the ball deeper into ASU territory. Good look at Steve Roberts, coach here, and now in his sixth year, here is the head coach for the Indians, the last time they'll be called the Indians in this home stadium. And he's uh, already as the fifth winningest coach in the history of ASU. Speaking of winningest coaches, Larry Lacewell will be our guest in the booth in the third, the winningest all-time coach in the history of ASU. And he's got a little antidote he'll share with us again in the third quarter. <laughs> uh, I love Larry Lace, uh, Larry Lace Roller. He is a piece of work. Isn't he, he is uh, he is a throwback. <laughs> he is an old time ball coach. Boy, he's a lot of fun. First and ten for the Mean Green at the 43. Visa, he can do this well. He carries it. You know, Coach, he's got a little bit of a little swagger in his walk because he says hey I can throw the ball but I also like to do this. Yeah well this is quarterback draw all the way and uh, this is what they're looking for in this offense. They want somebody uh, in Dodge ball Todd is looking for somebody that can run it somebody that can throw it and there you see coach Dodge right there and of course his son uh, Riley has already committed uh, to North Texas and uh, he's a great one. We'll talk about him uh, a little bit later. Beza came into the game tonight with 211 yards rushing. They give it to the inside and they boxed it outside. And that's exactly what this offense is set up to do. They lull you with a pass to set up the run. Normally it's the other way around as Thomas gains another first down for the main green. Yeah, you're exactly right, Sam, but they truly do set up the run with the pass. And that was another very good open field tackle by the senior Tyrell Johnson. Because Tom. Demario Thomas, he's a load in the open field. He ran with his brother in high school in Longview for records galore for their high school in Longview, Texas. And, of course, he came as a freshman in North Texas, won the title, then got injured, and is slowly but surely working himself back into shape again. Jamario Thomas, a senior this year, 5'11", 210. Visa swings it. Here again, they get it to the open man near side as Fitzgerald will carry it inside the 15. And for that Thomas carry of 15 yards and a first down, they kind of angle it inside. And that's one thing they've done well, Coach, is not only can they run the post, but they run a lot of slants and all kinds of little flare passes outside. Yeah, th well, this is really a running play. This is just a wide receiver screen. Uh, they have a triple formation. The other two block, and the inside guy gets the ball, Casey Fitzgerald, right there. Fitzgerald, who had 18 catches against ASU, or excuse me, SMU, early this year. 
And that, of course, is the most in the nation this year by a receiver. Ten and a half minutes left to go in the first. North Texas has taken the opening kickoff from their own 35. And now are knocking on the door at the 14. Visa will keep it down to the four as he tumbles inside, maybe down to the three-yard line. That'll be another first down. First and goal to go for the mean green. Look at the ball handling here. This is a great fake. He rides him, pulls that ball out. That's the uh, zone read play. Nice job faking the football by the freshman. If the defensive end closes, he pulls it out, and away he goes. It's tough break for ASU because number three, Darian Tony, who's been injured off and on all year long, is down on the field at the five-yard line by the Indians, and he was just slowly but surely getting himself back into shape, and now he's coming out of there. Hopefully just ding for the moment and can come back in that secondary. They're going to need him tonight. Yeah, they really will. You know, again, they're going to be playing dime defense all night. So these defensive backs are really going to get a workout. Coach Todd Dodge on the other side. Coach Dodge, the only thing he did in his last seven years at South Lake High School in Carroll was to come up with championship after championship. And his son Riley, as coach has pointed out, has already signed with the Mean Green. And he looks like he may be leading him to another title over there. So Coach Dodd didn't leave the cover empty over at no, South Lake. Not, not at all. They start the playoffs this week in Texas. And off up the middle, they push the pile to the goal line. No signal yet. Touchdown. Mean Green. And Jamario Thomas will carry it in. Thomas getting only his third touchdown of the year. And you get a guy that led the nation in rushing. You expect more than three, but let's face it, it's a passing offense at North Texas. Well, you know what? It's been interesting because Jamario Thomas, I, I talked to Coach Dodge about him, and he's had a great attitude this year. You know, that would be easy for a running back. He played in, a, in obviously, an I-formation run offense, and now to go to a passing offense, but he's had a great attitude and been very effective. Extra point by Thomas Moreland is up and good. And that makes it 7-0 at 9.44 left to go here in the first quarter. North Texas has won the opening toss and come back with a score as they lead in the first quarter. This ESPN Plus Sunbelt Conference game is brought to you by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. By Golden Flake, the official snack of the Sun Belt, the original potato chip of the South. By NRG, unleash your body's full potential with NRG's Phoenix Fury Potato Chips, the new breed of energy. By Choice Hotels International, wherever the game takes you, we are there. By Gatorade, the question is, is it in you? And by Havoc, disrupt the ordinary. Well, for the final time in a home game, the Indians will be used here as a nickname. By direction of the NCAA, they will drop it. There are some names have been nominated. We'll share those with you a little later in the telecast. But again, it is Black Thursday as they say goodbye to the Indian nickname. Indians get the football now as they kick it. End over end. It'll be caught on the other end this time by Kevin Jones. Jones and Tompkins, a very good receiver. There's a ball was loose a moment on the ground, but it's recovered by Kevin Jones. And he sets up the Indians in business as they moved it to the 28-yard line. Well, you talk about the quarterback. We've already talked about one of the nominees for the Davey O'Brien Award. And Corey Leonard, coach, he comes out throwing that ball as well. Well, he's immensely talented young football player. Just announced this week one of the 15 finalists uh, in the nation for the Davey O'Brien Award. Uh, just a true sophomore. Uh, he's had a lot of injury problems, but I talked to Coach Roberts just before the game. He is totally 100% healthy tonight for the first time in really about a month and a half. He's one of those youngsters like a rubber ball. You keep throwing him against the wall. He keeps coming back at you. As again, he gets ready for his first play from scrimmage and a handoff play as they'll try to run the ball up the middle. And they take it to the 36. Our Regents Bank starting lineup tonight on offense for North Texas. There's Reggie Arnold who carried the ball and McNeil the fullback. Johnson Dijon at their top receiver and Kevin Jones who return the kick are the wideouts. Up front, they get some good ones there. Lockley, a player that has been around a while, thrower along with Mandich, the two tackles, will be tough to handle for this North Texas defense. Regents Bank and our starting lineup for the Indians tonight. Gain of the play of four, second down and six for North Texas. Two tight end system. And it to the outside of Reggie Arnold. Stumbles just a bit before he gets too many yards, maybe gained a couple. Regents Bank now spotlights the defense. Gilmore along with Chapman, Chapman in particular, their best tackle for losses and uh, 
sack man, but look out for Stevenson, an intercept for a touchdown already this year. Robertson Mendoza, their number one uh, tackler, and also Holman, other linebackers, while the secondary, they too, will be tested. Withers is the best one back there, but Cotton is uh, inserted into the lineup tonight as Agobot is out of the lineup for the safety here for North Texas. Regions Bank, defensive starters for North Texas. Third down play, a bullet comes out to the 42-yard line, but dropped as they try to get it in the hands of their wide receiver, Joe Smith, but he had it but could not hang on to it. Boy, that was a bullet. I mean, take a look at this. You can see the arm strength of Corey Leonard right here. Wow. I mean, and again, like a lot of quarterbacks, early in the game, the adrenaline going, sometimes that ball just sails a little bit. That's exactly what happened there. Coach, that's what North Texas wanted their safety, Aaron Withers, to do, to be active. He's been a little act inactive this year, a little disappointing, but he makes a great play there as it's kick time here for Arkansas State. Brett Strabel. Will be kicking away one of the top kickers in the league, top 50 in the NCA, as a matter of fact, averaging nearly 42 a kick. And a fair catch is going to be called for by North Texas by Evan Roman. And it'll be taken over here by North Texas. They scored in their first possession. Let's see if they do it again. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? Come on, what's your secret? Would you take lessons? You got your own pro? Yep, I got a bunch of them. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Get 12 months of Golf Digest with easy to follow tips and techniques for just $14.97. Order today and receive this DVD absolutely free. Call now and order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. Gatorade Sports Science Institute. We test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Now, see, when people think of GEICO, right, they think of car insurance. And of course, saving money. But sometimes that can lead even the savviest driver astray. Take, for example, the motorcycle owner. He calls Geico wanted to save money on his car insurance, only to realise that he doesn't actually own a car. Well, needless to say, he's quite embarrassed, isn't he? Doesn't matter. Geico insures motorcycles and ATVs as well. That way, no one ends up looking foolish. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Geico Sports Night and Sportsnet New York. The place for you to get your New York sports news. The place for you to see the latest on your New York sports teams. If it happens in New York, it happens on Geico Sports Night. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night on Sportsnet New York. SNY is the place where your Mets heroes of the past will live forever on an all-new season of Mets Classics. From the Miracle Mets of 1969 to the NLDS of 2006. Mets Classics, exclusively on Sportsnet New York. Todd Dodge trying to become one of the few coming directly out of high school into the college ranks with a success. Of course, a 1-8 record so far in North Texas, but you can see that the system, if he starts getting the people to play the system, they could be tough in Denton. And off up the middle as they'll get Jamario Thomas for another seven or eight yards. He pushes it out to the 40-yard line, may have gained nearly nine. It'll be a second down and two yards to go. Coach, you know the way they throw the ball around with 2,861 yards prior to the first drive, they could challenge Idaho's record of 38-26 when they were part of the Sun Belt as the most yards passed in a conference season. And quite obviously, they, uh, they'd they have to have a couple of two or three big games, but they're very, very capable of doing that. <laughs> well, they, they can put 600 up in a heartbeat. I mean, this offense is amazing. Uh, you know, and it's basically, it is the same offense that Coach Dodge uh, ran in high school at uh, Carroll, of course, high school with all the success. And, and really, and there's another, that this, that's the possession passing game. That's the first down. He got about uh, four and a half yards there, but he moves the chains. Coach is the defensive coordinator in the National Football League in charge of the secondary. How do you try to attack defensively against this style? Well, I, you know, I, I, I think that eventually you have to play some man to man. They spread the field so wide that, you know, they'll just pick you apart. I think you have to play some man to man and be aggressive with them, and you got to blitz them some. Uh, you know, and, but every time you do, you roll the dice. Perfect example of spreading the field, coach. There from almost sideline to sideline here. Yeah, well, that, that's the whole philosophy of this offense. 
He's a checking off second and or excuse me a first down. And off this time the Indians will chase this one down at the 45 yard line. Getting good pursuit from the linebackers. At that time coming up McKinnon comes up to make the stop. McKinnon one of those special athletes Kobe at a Junction City Arkansas came in as their number one tackler tonight and again has done a marvelous job. He's actually number three in the conference in tackles. Yeah, that's the whole idea uh, and that's exactly uh, what Kevin Corliss the defensive coordinator in Arkansas State wants get him going east and west. There you see that uh, straight line pass outside and again he throws it so strong and so hard even if you get a good jump on a coach it's there before you can react. Yeah take a look at this throw right now from behind now. a little sprint and he's throwing all the way across the field from one hash all the way across to the far sideline. And uh, you know he, he's got a good true freshman. I mean he has been unbelievable this year for them. Offensive player of the year last year in Texas Alamo Heights uh, High School in San Antonio. They won their first ever for a state championship at that school. Now this is very interesting what happened here. North Texas is audibly and Arkansas State audibled their defense. Third down. Five to go. Whistle before the play's off, and they may have taken too much time. Yeah, I think that, you know, it's sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you just try to get too smart with audible here, audible there, audible back, back Time and out. forth. North Texas. North Texas. First time out of the half. Call the timeout the before top. the play Five was uh, whistled dead. The yeah, Coach, so. Coach Dodge uh, got that timeout in from, in from the sideline. North Texas, of course, came out and lost their first five games of the season. And again, that was really nothing unusual. They did that also when they lost their first five uh, back in 2001 and came on and won five consecutive games to win the championship as well. And of course, they turned their season right around. I'd like to remind you, SunbeltSports.org, your web source, everything Sunbelt Conference Sports you'd like to have. Check out your favorite teams, who they're playing, and what their stats are. And all you'll have it all on SunbeltSports.org. And also go on if you happen to be the uh, volleyball folks. They'll be uh, celebrating their championship. They'll be playing over in Denver this weekend. So you can check out who the favorite teams in the volleyball championship as well in the Sun Duck Conference. If you happen to be in the Denver area, be sure and go out and watch some of the best lady volleyball players you'll find anywhere in the country. They do play some great, great volleyball. That's some, there's some athletes in that group, I'll tell you, yep. they, they're, they're fun to watch. You know, I, I'll guarantee you that last timeout that was called by Coach Dodge from the sideline was because he had a bad play on when Arkansas State audible mm -hmm. to change their defense. Indian Stadium here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sam Smith along with Doug Graber. As the coach and I look on for this, the final edition of our trips to Jonesboro and ASU. Both the teams out of the conference chase. They're playing for pride the rest of the way. These are knocked out of his hands. That ball's on the ground. And it's going to be ruled as an incompleted pass. Well, a lot of pressure coming up the middle in Carrington. Alex Carrington, the left tackle, came up to make a little hit on Visa. Let's watch this, Coach. Yeah, this is Alex Carrington. Uh, watch him right here. I'll tell you, he, he, is, oh, yeah. he is a monster coming from that end spot. And uh, that time they got him in third and five and got the stop. Carrington was given a lot of credit by Coach uh, Steve Roberts for doing this against Memphis. They came with 29 unanswered points in the second half to beat Memphis 35-31. Kick time here for North Texas. Truman Spencer also averaging over 21 per kick. Will kick it deep, and Jones will fair catch at the 10. And that's where ASU will take over. Excuse me, that's Hopkins making the fair catch. So the Indians will get their second possession, trailing by seven. There's an easier way to get where you're going in life even if you're starting your second one. At the new regions, you'll find more support today for the tomorrow you're dreaming about. Isn't that what you should expect from your bank? Regions, it's time to expect more. Own a timeshare or campground membership? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one, most successful timeshare agency, representing properties from the biggest names in the industry. No one sells more timeshares. Call now and receive a free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Don't delay. Call 800-464-3216.
Chris Cotter here, Big Show on Daily News Live. A-Rod closer to joining the Yanks. Mariana Rivera, maybe not so close. Moose Johnson's going to be here in studio, and we'll talk to Earl the Pearl about the Knicks. It's all coming up, Daily News Live, tonight after Sports Night. Hey, Jets fans, here's your shot at an SMY Jets all-access pass. Attend a live taping of an SMY Jets studio show. Get four tickets to Jets Browns on December 9th, including pregame on-field passes. You want the access? Log on to SMY.TV today to enter and win. 124 years of hikes, hits, kicks. First down, downtown touchdown. Wiseman, Heisman, pom-poms, third and longs. Franks, passes, ascots, mascots, drives, dives, fans, bands in the stands. Two teams, both of them undefeated. Harvard, Yale, just another game? I don't think so. Harvard, Yale, live to decide the Ivy League title. Saturday at noon on SNY. Arkansas State will not have good field position to start their second drive of the night at the 10 yard line where Tompkins fair caught the ball from Spencer but they'll spread out the field themselves and out of the shotgun will be Corey Leonard. ASU trying to get something going here against the defense of North Texas has been a little porous this year to say the least that time a throw of the middle intended for DeJanette. Pass was uh, very hard and a little wide of Dijonette because anytime he gets his name on him, uh, his hands on him, coach, he normally makes a pretty good grab. Yeah, he really does. And, and, you know, Corey Leonard has just been just a little bit off. You know, when you're the opposing quarterback, uh, this North Texas offense puts a lot of pressure on you because you feel like you have to go out and control the ball and, and, and it'll help your defense out, and they certainly have not done that yet. Dijonette, their top receiver with 50 catches, 565 yards, looks for his first catch of the night. Will it come here? It will not. As there's a keeper by Leonard, a good runner out of that quarterback spot, carries it out to about the 19. That'll be shy of a first down by about a yard and a half, brings up third down play here for the Indians. Yeah, again, there's the zone read. You see, you saw his uh, Corey Leonard's eyes were right on the defensive end. He made the correct decision. The end closed. He pulled it out. Sets up the third and a very short one. You know, for North Texas, offense has not been the problem this year at all. This, <laughs> this defense has been the problem. They've given up an average of 50 points per game. Ouch. Roderick Cott, number 24 out of Nacogdoches, Texas. The Safety making the stop on the last play. This time ASU tries to get the yards needed for a first down with a little carry in the middle. As Arnold will get the carry, moves it outside of the 21, and that should move the chains for the Indians. You know, and, and really, the spread offense that is so popular now that so many teams are running, Arkansas State being one of them, uh, you know, it, it's really the single wing offense. I mean, it's a direct snap to the quarterback. And that was just the same as an isolation play. The remaining back is the blocker and the quarterback is the runner. So first down and 10 to go for ASU. Good look at Reggie Arnold. Arnold, the leading uh, rusher here with 139 carries, and he has gone over 900 yards for the year now. Leonard on a naked bootleg to the near side. Oh, look at the sidearm delivery. That's going to be good. Great catch by Dijonette. How about that delivery, Coach? Well, that's exactly what you see from Corey Leonard. He is... Such a good athlete and throws so well on the run. And uh, take a look. Th this was very, very well played by the North Texas defense. The uh, tight end who was running the crossing route was covered. And that's tough to stop that outcut on the sideline to Dijonette. But uh, again, uh, Corey Leonard just, uh, he, he really is exciting to watch a, a, a young quarterback who could developed into a great player. Latif Newendeen was right on top of the play, but a great throw by Leonard and an excellent catch by Dijonette. And now Arnold will carry for about a yard at most as he tries to take it over the right-hand side as, again, Coates along with Lockley and Thrower are the guys that made the stop there. There's a good look at Chapman. Chapman is one of the top uh, sack guys in the uh, conference with four and a half sacks and also 11 tackles for losses, Coach. He's an all Sunbelt Conference performer. And again, playing that way again this year. Yeah, he, he's a good one. He's a senior, 243. Uh, you know, he, he has been an outstanding defensive player for North Texas. They give him no gain, so it's second and 10. Leonard out of the shotgun. Oh, he lets that one go, and that's a flyer. Yep, that's another one. Exactly the same as his first throw. He had him open. He's just a little bit anxious. He's got a little bit too much adrenaline going. 
and that ball sails on him on his release. He, as he settles down, now, I, I think he'll get those footballs down. I think one of the other reasons he might have let that go is Craig Robertson, the outside linebacker from Stratford, Texas, six feet, 210, was putting some heat on him right up the middle. He was he was bearing down on him. That was a blitz by North Texas. Uh, Arkansas State with a big third down play here, Coach. They got to keep some drives alive here if they want to stay in the game. Yeah, the, you know, they, they have to. Leonard. Happy feet takes him out of the uh, pocket and he'll just chuck that one out of bounds and it'll be incomplete of course throwing up the sideline he'll rule there's a man close enough for no grounding and it'll bring up kick time here. Yeah th this is a, a, a smart play he had no place to go with the football just get rid of it he's out of the out of the pocket uh, past the tackle box no problem there. You saw number 94 Edric Gilmore out of Houston 6 5 40 number 94 was in hot pursuit and Leonard said whoops I better get rid of this ball and get out of bounds in a hurry and he did I don't blame him <laughs> it was a good decision Srabel will be kicking the ball away from ASU now you know, this should be the special teams should be an advantage for Arkansas State their special teams have been outstanding all year and North Texas has struggled a little bit in that area. Here's, a, here's Roman up the near sideline. Roman oh. is rolled out of bounds. Tyrell Johnson. There is a flag down. By the way, Roman, uh, who made that catch in the carry back, is one of my leading candidates for my all hair team. And oh, he's got it from out from under his helmets. Coach, <laughs> I tell you what, I have researched this league, and that's my winner. Yeah, no that's question. the all hair winner of the Sun Belt Conference. Evan Roman of North Texas MVP MVP all the way flag is down and uh, Mr. Leffler and uh, company by the way interesting at the hotel today they gather almost as much as the coaches do they were gathered in one of the room watching film during the return block in the back on North Texas number 28 that's a 10 yard penalty first down so they'll step it off at the end of that uh, run. And the 10 yards will take it back to the 12-yard line, but back to the officials. They, too, want to know the styles of the team, Coach. Oh, absolutely. They, they, they study the tapes of their last game, critique themselves, and look at the tapes of the teams they're doing to get a feel for the style of offense. That they, these officials, they, uh, you know, they work extremely hard on the road. And the Sun Belt does a great job, and, and I tell you, they've got some outstanding crews in this conference. You also saw them as they map every play on the sideline, and of course, write down all of the uh, plays that have been called official-wise on what the call was. So they want to make sure everything is documented as well as on the field up here in the booth as well. Here, once again, is the quarterback. That's Visa. No place to run. A little better coverage that time by Arkansas State, and he just had to eat in and run with it. Boy, and the umpire, Donald Yates, uh, take a look at this. He really took a shot here on this. I would not watch the umpire right in the middle of the screen right here. Ooh, that right. Watch the shot right there. That is dangerous on the knees. And, of course, uh, Don Yates, uh, you know, he's an attorney, lives in Key West. He played at Florida State. Uh, you know, you wonder what these guys do other than officiate. He's an outstanding attorney down at Key West. Donnie, Donnie, you got to get out of the way, babe. Come Boy, on. Sometimes you, as an umpire, you can just get stuck in some really bad situations, and that was one of them. Second down, five yards needed here by the Mean Green. He's a throwing out of there, a little slant from the outside coming across the middle. And another good catch made here by the receivers for North Texas. They've got a bevy of them as Jackson, Brandon Jackson. He is a senior out of uh, Fort Bend, Texas, down in Big Bend country. They thought he was going to be the receiver of note, but Fitzgerald has really stepped up. But Jackson, they'd really like to see him go out with a flurry with a couple of real good games. Well, he, he's a senior, and he is a good one. And they're playing this uh, true freshman, Sam DeBrell, and they really like him. Oh, look at this. They're Talking the about DeBrell, side. that's him right there. And they're throwing up the near sideline, and they've got some folks in the open. That's going to be Washington as he catches it up the sideline, and he also can fly. As to, no, it is DeBrell. I'm sorry. As Debril makes the reception there, and he uh, had a couple of big catches against Navy last week. A true freshman out of San Antonio, and they, they really think he can be a good one. And uh, that was cover two. The safety just uh, did not get there in time. That was not on the corner. That was on the safety. Coach, that was 40 yards, so a great uh, way to kind of eat up some yardage here by the main green. It's a first and 10. And around the 34-and-a-half yard line in ASU territory. 7-0 with Mean Green. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Inside handoff as they 
use a bevy of backs as far as two Thomas and Mosley Mosley on the carry there Micah out of a needle in Texas high school carried for over 2400 yards and the 29 uh, touchdowns in his senior year. Now the true freshman you know hitting the field <laughs> for North Texas. Good gain of the play they give him four on it it's second down and six. Mosley stays into the game as Visa who's put together 132 total yards to only 31 by Arkansas tonight and a score by the mean green and off inside to Mosley and a nice little gaping hole carries it inside the 25 as he ran by McKenna the linebacker there who got him tripped up and then got help from the safeties. Well I, I have to tell you as a former NFL defensive coordinator uh, this North Texas offense <laughs> Uh, they really present some problems. I mean, Arkansas State is a good defensive football team. They spread you out so far. And then, of course, with their audibles and their checks and everything else, uh, they, they, they just give you some problems. And it's just very, very tough to, to defend against. I mean, this is no accident. The numbers they're putting up this year. There you see it. it. Not yep. for the first down. Just by the nose of the football coach, they came into the game tonight, number one in passing in the belt. 317 9 you mentioned eighth in the country in passing and they passed uh, in total offense last week against Navy scoring 62 635 total yards Mr. Defensive Coordinator that is a nightmare isn't it whoa <laughs> whoa you know that's one of those deals that you just wake up the next day with a tremendous headache that just doesn't go away I mean I'll tell you wow this is basically the same offense that Missouri's running and of course they're having their share of success with this offense as well. Gary Pinkle uh, is doing a great job at Missouri. Uh, he and Coach Dodge are very close. And the quarterback they have from South Lake. Here's a little fade to the corner, and that's going to be almost intercepted as they were trying to chase that down on the near side. And again, North Texas almost got a good run on that one, and it was just over the head of the intended interceptor that time as well overthrown on the receiver. Yeah, this is Darren Tony at corner and he gets a jam on the receiver right there that knocked off the timing of that fade route. And that was a Jabril, that was the true freshman. And he did not do a good job of avoiding the jam. It's good to see Tony is back out there. He's matched up one on one on Jabril again down on the bottom side of your screen here. It's a second down and 10 for North Texas. Ball at the 24 of ASU. Empty backfield for Visa. Good protection. He throws it over the middle. They've got the completion. They carry it down to the three yard line. Oh, they're throwing it all over. But again, they get it down to Stickler, I believe, and that'll be 21 yards for him. Yeah, and, and that was against the, the coverage is called quarters coverage. And this is the safety that gets beat on this inside move right there. See that? Yeah, that was definitely the safety right there that got beat on it. Not a good job. And that was the Cayenne Burns. So Burns makes this stop here. They give it inside to Mosley. Down to the two, still fighting. Thrown back to about the three and a half. All kinds of help up front that time. Led in there again by Tyrell Johnson coming from the safety. Led the charge for the Indians. They'll carry it down to about the two yard line as we approach the end of the first quarter. North Texas took the opening kickoff. Ten plays. They went the 65 yards for the score, and that's where we stand at seven to nothing. And that indeed looks like it will be the last play of the first quarter. So, Coach, interesting. North Texas wanted the football to their offense, and they did exactly, I think, what they wanted to do. That was control a lot of time in that first quarter. They've, they've been doing this to everybody. I mean, they, you know, they, they really frustrated Navy last week. Navy, of course, outscored them 74-62. Short week for North Texas. An important week for ASU. We'll continue from Jonesboro in a moment. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial-free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio.
Live from the Big East plays ball at SNY. Derek Character and Edgar Sosa lead number six Louisville as Rick Pitino and the Cardinals take on Jackson State. College basketball on SNY, presented by Infinity. Jackson State versus Louisville, Sunday at 1.30 on SNY. Delgado to deep left field. TV home of the Mets, Jets, and all things New York sports is Sportsnet New York. Welcome to Verizon Fios. It's pure, undiluted movies, music, and sports. They flow on light straight to your home. 100% digital fiber optics makes videos and music come alive and takes high def TV to a higher level. Movies and exclusive programs are at your fingertips. Record a show on one TV and view it on any other. And you don't just watch sports, you feel them. With picture clarity that's unmatched anywhere. Send photos from your PC to your TV. Play games at blazing speeds on the fastest internet connection available. The network we call Verizon Fios. Get Fios TV, internet, and unlimited calling for less than $95 a month. Sign up now and you'll receive a free sharp 19-inch LCD HD TV. Call 1-877-444-FIOS. Verizon Fios, the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. College football from Jonesboro, Arkansas, where they're bundled up here. It was about 49 degrees when we arrived at the stadium. Should be about 42 before this one's all over, maybe even colder. In Jonesboro, North Texas in the 30th time they've been in the red zone. They've scored 21 times, including once tonight. Let's see if they can do it again. Second down and goal to go from the two. ASU digging in, and North Texas analyzing at the line of scrimmage. He's the quarterback out of the shotgun. Inside handoff, Mosley takes it. Touchdown, North Texas. They score from in close. Nice, nice push by that offensive line. The whole interior of that line. Uh, Kelvin Drake, Chad Rose, Tyler Bailey, Esteban Santiago. They really got a good push. Take a look at this right here. Nice movement. That's a nice job in particular by uh, Santiago, number 77, the right guard. Coach, they've scored so many touchdowns on uh, passes. They go nine uh, plays and 88 yards there. That time they've carried uh, two of men on the running play with Thomas and Mosley now. Coming up as the kick is up and good by Moreland. And he makes it a 14 and upping score. Let's watch it in tight again. Watch that push, coach, you were talking about. Wow. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do against that. I mean, the, the, you know, they, they kind of spread you out. They get you used to playing pass defense. And then all of a sudden, wham, they, you know, they come off the ball and hit you right in the mouth. I, I'm amazed. I mean, I, I, I really am amazed watching this. Offense attack there you see of course uh, Micah Mosley the freshman running back for North Texas I'll tell you th this is scary to the Sun Belt Conference uh, when Todd Dodge really gets his recruiting yep. cranked up and I was talking to him about that the other day he already has 12 commitments in the state of Texas he's off to a great start uh, of course uh, his son Riley uh, is a pretty good start to this recruiting class he had committed to Texas as a junior. And then, of course, when his dad took the job at North Texas, you know, that was uh, a good move, I think, on his part. He will be enrolling. Uh, will Riley Dodge be in January? He'll be in spring football. Uh, he uh, is uh, one of the most heavily recruited quarterbacks in the nation. It'll really be interesting to see exactly how it plays out with Giovanni Visa, a freshman, and, of course, uh, Riley Dodge coming in, who will be a freshman. Some talk about red shirting uh, coach Dodger's son but boy they'll have two really good quarterbacks in the program and of course keep in mind they've already got Daniel Mager who is a will be a senior next year uh, played most of last year before uh, uh, ending up the season as the kick comes to Tompkins Tompkins on the run to the near sideline he averages nearly 22 per carry out of that uh, kickoff return and gets it out over the 35 to the 36 yard line as he'll set up the Indians this will be their best best field position as he returns at 29 yards here coach and it's nice to finally get your offense in position to do something with it here. Yeah and I'll tell you there's a double team here on the side and this Tompkins kid uh, again a sophomore uh, from Florida. Uh, he's scary. Uh, you know he only needs 60 yards tonight uh, on kickoff returns to break the Sun Belt record the season record 
for kickoff returns. And of course with 927 on kickoff returns coming in. Uh, saving for a lot of kicks coming tonight. Of course he could uh, break the thousand mark tonight for a season. Already holds the record for that for a single season. Here's Leonard back to throw. Pocket breaks wow. down and down he goes. And for Arkansas State is that line up front breaks down again. And this is going to be another sack. That'll be number 37 on the year, Coach, against the quarterbacks of ASU. Well, this is it. Take a look. This has been the Achilles heel for this Arkansas State offense. And again, you know, who's at fault there? Well, first of all, the quarterback is holding the ball a little yep. bit. Uh, so he's certainly, uh, you know, one of the culprits. The offensive line didn't hold it long enough. Uh, everybody always blames the offensive line on sacks, but uh, it's not always their fault. Edric Gilmore got credit for the sack. You saw coming from the other side was Chapman, number 90, almost got there in time. Dijanette to the near side, gave a little ground and lost some back down about the 30-yard line as he will gain only about three of the missing yards back. And we'll bring up a third down, and they'll need about 15 here for the first down. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If Arkansas State doesn't start making some plays offensively, running the football better, uh, they could be in for a very, very long night against this explosive uh, North Texas offense. It, it, when I say explosive, I mean that they just six and seven yard you to death uh, in, in this offense. You know, the, the, the short, controlled passing game, they spread the field. And they do a great job of executing it. Leonard this time. Happy feet will keep him alive. And oh, what a great play defensively by North Texas as they knocked that one away at the very last moment. And it's Higgs who came from the safety spot to knock that one away. And that one had uh, reception written all over it, but knocked away at the last moment. But well, this might have been a touchdown because, uh, you know, he was, take a look at this. That's a great play by the uh, safety coming across right there, Cliff Higgs. Tremendous play by Higgs. So Higgs saves it there. They were trying to get it to Dijonette, who already has a career-high season going with 52 receptions. His previous side had been 43 in his two previous years, but again, could not get that one on a great defensive play. They're coming after the kicker, uh, Srabel, who gets it out of there. And this is Roman calls for a fair catch. I'm not sure if it hit him or not. The ball is coming down, and it'll be at the discretion of the officials as he may have gotten out of the way just at the last moment, but that was close as he called for the fair catch and then <laughs> slipped down. I, I don't believe the ball hit him. I thought he he, he, <laughs> he kind of st he stumbled around here a little bit, and he trips on the, uh, that one stripe there he tripped on, but, uh, but I, the ball did not hit him. So again, very, very close. My all-hair MVP runs wow. right out of his shoe, but the ball still will belong again here to North Texas. Every day at Golden Flake, it all starts with a special premium potato that longs for something more. More flavor and more crunch. Seeking a life of delicious variety and guaranteed freshness in every chip and every bag. That's what Golden Flake brings to the table. For us, these are the good times. Finding our way to your neighborhood grocery and into your basket headed home. Turning potatoes into the life of your party. Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. Gatorade Sports Science Institute. We test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. This month on Net Impact, travel across the pond with the New York Giants. I love it here. You know, we need to build here once a year. Plus, Ed Snyder's youth hockey program takes a special group of kids to Canada to build both life and ice skills. It made me feel really special. I really decided that I wanted this to be my legacy. And meet Matt Ryan, a Boston College quarterback and Heisman Trophy candidate. Don't miss Net Impact, Sunday at 6.30 on SNY. Hey, Jets fans. That's right, I'm talking to you. As soon as our game is over, switch to SNY for Jets Post Game Live. You don't even have to leave the couch. Just grab the remote and turn to SNY. Get analysis and all our post game reactions. We'll be ready. 
talk to you every week with Brian Custer, Ray Lucas, and Adam Schein in the SNY Studios. Listen to these guys. Watch Jets post game live after every Jets game this season only on SNY. All you got to do is change the channel to SNY. See, it's not that hard. Get your New York sports here. I'd like to tell you how not to impress your date. Say, honey, I got you some great seats for the football game. Let's go and watch ASU in North Texas. They are so far up there. That's a $5 cab ride to the top of the stadium. And it's cold out there. Coach. It is, and the wind is hitting up there. Of course, you know, maybe that's pretty smart. You know, it's not a, too bad. Yeah, you know, that's good planning. Oh, my. Well, they are still discussing it in the uh, replay booth here, Coach, because as we saw, Roman just. Uh, at the last second yanked his head back or did he get it out of the way in time I guess that's the discussion going on right now because if he did uh, touch the ball Arkansas State recovered it and they'd have excellent field position here it is again yeah, his shoe came I just noticed his shoe came out boy I tell you what you know on that view that looks like it may have grazed his helmet see the ball took such a, a diverted angle now watch him when it comes straight see that kind of goes almost straight the other way because wow. it was coming back towards the right and it comes sharply back to the left now remember, of course, in the in the replay booth, they have to have clear evidence That's to right. overturn the yep. call. But that <laughs> that looked like there Ooh. that it might it might have just grazed his helmet and shoulder pad. So that's the discussion going on as you see Coach Todd Dodge as he talks to his troops to try to get him in. 13 years a high school coach, and again the last seven at uh, South Lake and Carroll High School. 79 and one the last five years they won four class uh, 5A championships. 02, 04, 05, and 06. They lost by a single point in the other championship game, or he needed that five in a row. You know, and I talked to uh, John McAvick, who was the former head coach at Texas, and the Todd Dodge was, was with him for a while as a graduate assistant. After review, the ruling on the field stands illegal touching Arkansas State. First down, North Texas on the 21 yard line. Wow. That was a close one. It was. So but, Fiza will come back out. Back to your story talking yeah, about Dodge. Coach, uh, coach Makovic, uh, you know, had uh, Todd Dodge as a young. Of course, he played at Texas. Mm -hmm. He was a great quarterback there himself. He thought he was going to be a tremendous offensive coach, and he called it because uh, you can see the proof is in the pudding. Well, Todd Ford technically is the offensive coordinator, but we know who calls the plays. For North Texas, that's the man that we've been talking about, Todd Dodge. The head football coach who operates on the sideline. North Texas first and 10 at the 21. Look at him run. Visa. There's that little inside slant once again as they come inside to Jackson. And Axon Jackson takes it out to the 27 yard line as they'll pick up about five yards on it, second down and five. Maybe make it four. You know, and I, I talked to Coach Dodge this week about uh, Giovanni Visa and his improvement. And uh, the biggest thing that's happened for him is the game has slowed down. Oh, yeah. he's got one here. Look he out. They air it out. That's going to be a jump ball. Tyrell that's going to be intercepted. Johnson. Tyrell Johnson and the scouts downstairs of the NFL. Watch as he closed that ground in a hurry and makes a huge intercept here for ASU. Well, you know what? I, I've, been, I've coached the secondary in the NFL for many years, and this is a great recovery he makes right there and, uh, and just takes it away. Uh, Tyrell Johnson is going to be someplace in the National Football League next year. There's no question about that. Leading tackler in the history of the Sunbelt Conference, 336 tackles coming in. Of course, uh, Burns, the safety, has also cracked the 300 mark, which was the record held by Tukes, a linebacker here at ASU, before the start of the year and, of course, for the career. But Johnson comes up with another intercept, and for him, that is a key one for him as that's his 12th. And that is his fifth of the year, and that is a career high for him with five intercepts in the season. And off to Arnold. Oh, look out. He's got some space. Reggie Arnold, they've got some angles on him. Arnold will step out of bounds at around the 35. Wow, boy, when he turned that corner, Coach, it looked like there was nothing but green grass ahead of him there. Good recovery after 34 yards on the run. Watch the cutback right there. There's the key, the cutback, and, uh, and somebody, I thought the outside linebacker, probably Holman, uh, lost the leverage on that play. Right here, number 42 right there is the guy who's responsible for that cutback, and he just over-pursued. So again, Reggie Arnold outruns that time Withers, who finally tapped him out of bounds, and Reggie Arnold tacks on 34 yards more to his total, as he, of course, is trying to crack the 1,000 mark before the season is over for the second straight year. 
inside handoff as they try to muscle their way up the middle that time and they'll get it to Preston Brown Brown is just a redshirt freshman and they kind of like the way this young man has stepped in and done uh, yeoman work here behind uh, the big guy Arnold well they do it and, and Sam I have to do this that was Craig Robertson Robertson who lost the leverage on that last play not Holman second down and eight yards to go gain of two out of the shotgun Corey Leonard Leonard again playing the last two games maybe the last three with all an assortment of injuries and now be as close to healthy as he is for quite a few weeks for Arkansas State throws a rope out to the 30 yard line and it's going to be incomplete that time as D. Jeanette got his hands on it got a lot of company by North Texas State and couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, and this is uh, you know that's the third ball now that's uh, been dropped. Take a look at this quick release. It's just a, a, a quick hitch out to Dijonet. And again, uh, that ball's got to be caught. You can see his head come off the yep. football right at the very end there. And of course, you know you got to catch it before you can do something with it. Nurandine, the corner was out on the coverage, but that should have been caught. Third down play by ASU. They throw it out to the far side, and that's going to be a great catch. As they fall out of bounds the far side, and that is Gallat. Trevor Gallat will make the catch, and boy, you talk about when you get your fingers on it, you're going to hang on. This kid did a great job of that. Well, and, and really, this, this is another high throw right here. It's just kind of sailing on him right there, and he had a lot of pressure, but oh. boy, what a catch by Ooh. Gallat. Wow. Gallat is just a sophomore out of Little Rock. And again, a great play keeps Arkansas drive alive as they get it inside the 25. 24 yard line of North Texas 14 nothing mean green here they let it go with a screen it's set up near side to Brown Brown's got some room at the 10 out of the five is tumble down at the three yard line and the flag is down not a lot of blocking up in front of him that could create a possible block in the back or a clip but we'll find out and it could be a face mask we'll wait and see what the call might be yeah from where that was sort no it's a, it is a, hold. a hold that's the wide receiver then that the hold was on. Wow, boy, they're inside the five yard line. That, that, that really hurts. hurts. Yep. So the holding call, boy, they set that screen up nicely. Here's Mr. Leffler. Holding on the offense, number 14. That's a 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. So 10 yards on the end of that one. And again, instead of having first and goal to go at the four, they'll move it back outside the 20. Outside the 15, excuse me. You know, and they called it on Tompkins uh, right there, number 14. I really didn't see a hold right there, to be very honest with you. <laughs> Neither did I, I Steve thought, Roberts. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought that Kevin Jones, number six, might have had one earlier, but I did not see a hold on Tompkins right there. They'd carry the ball after the 20. Now they've respotted it at the 14 yard line, is where ASU will have it first and 10 after the 10 yard markoff from the four. 12 minutes left to go before halftime as Mean Green on the road lead 14 to nothing. Audible by Doug Bruce, who's up in the press box, the offensive coordinator. Leonard with Brown staying in the backfield, hands off to the speedy freshman again to the outside, and he will be smothered under. As again, the linebackers continue to play extremely well, and also sprinting outside is Chapman, Jeremiah out of China Springs, Texas. And again, with 11 tackles for losses, 4.5 sacks, and one of the top tacklers on the front line with 46 tackles, including 47 with that one. The biggest thing I see different with the North Texas defense tonight, and they have really struggled mightily this year, is that they're being much more aggressive. They're playing more man-to-man. -man. They're blitzing more. They're being very aggressive. Leonard has to run away from trouble. Now he sets and throws across the field. It's Whoa, knocked down incomplete. Boy, Fortunate, fortunate that that was not picked off. He just broke the cardinal rule by throwing across the field. And I know that that uh, Doug Bruce will be talking to him about that on the uh, tape Monday. So take a look at this. He's very fortunate this was not picked off. Lots of air into that football, wow. and again, lots of white shirts around it. Withers was the first man to get a hand on it there for North Texas. He was throwing either the Jones or D. Jeanette at the goal line. You know, and, and give this North Texas defense some credit. I mean, let's be honest. They were embarrassed last week by Navy. Navy averaged over 13 yards per carry on Ooh. first and 10. Averaged. They were embarrassed in a short work week for them. They have come back, and they are playing very hard tonight. Third down and nine for the Indians. Here is Leonard sprinting out. Oh, he pitched that one. Almost looked like he pitched it ahead on a little shovel pass. 
And he does, and they sprint at the outside with Brown, and they had gained about a half a yard at most. And they'll have to bring in the field goal team. Coach, you just want to get some points on the board finally here in the first half. Well, you got to take the field goal here, but boy, there, there's a case for that holding penalty. Uh, really took him out of field position. Josh Arocco will come in. He is 13 of 19 so far this year. He's had uh, a 45 yarder against Texas, has been his longest one. The punter, Schrabel, will hold it. And they'll hold it at the 18-yard line, a 28-yard try, and that one's going to be blocked and picked up. And back the other way it goes as they try to run it back upfield. And again, a blocked field goal by go by North Texas. And they will get to Norlandine, will recover and carry it upfield here for North Texas. How about that one, Coach, as he gets a blocked uh, field goal try, and North Texas keeps Arkansas State off the board. And North Texas defense really rising the occasion tonight. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels from rock to pop, hip hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. What if there was a better way to get where you're going? A simpler way, with more control. At the new regions, we're all about making it easier for you to reach your goals. It's time to see what it feels like to have the wind in your hair and a bank by your side. Regions. It's time to expect more. Climb through the ropes and get in the ring. Because SNY Sunday Night Fights is your weekly main event in the city that refuses to sleep. Landing every jab, uppercut, knockout, and body blow. The contenders for sweet science glory step onto the canvas. And SNY is your ringside seat to see who will stand at the end. SNY Sunday Night Fights, every Sunday at 8, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Turn up the volume on Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. SNY brings Eric Mangini into your house. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be consistent throughout four quarters. SNY puts you in the front row for Coach Mangini's press conferences at Hofstra. No game comes down to one catch. No game comes down to one play. You won't miss a word. I like it. Making progress. You won't miss a thing. Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola, Mondays and Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m., only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Well, anytime you come on the road, young coach, old coach, veteran coach, whatever, you come on the road and you want to do exactly what North Texas has done. And that's coming out to a 14 point lead. We think this is uh, Jermaine Dawson, number 39 from the corner coach that made the block here. Yeah, the outside rusher, it's uh, Aaron Weathers, the safety that blocked it. Take a look at it. Uh, it's 39. Yeah, it is. I think you're right. I yep. believe it is 39. It's Dawson who made the block. And again, the carry back was Nurandine who carries it. Finally stepped out of bounds around the 33 yard line. First and 10 to go for the main green. Now, if, if that outside rusher blocks it, then to me, that's on the, the center, the holder, and the kicker. They're just too slow getting that kick off. So, first and 10 to go for the main green. Here's the fake, and here's Visa. Not afraid to run it, and he does for just shy of a first down. Gains around nine as he falls over the 41 and into the secondary of North Texas again. He's getting by that line of scrimmage pretty good. Carrington, Bond, Hickman, and Flag not having much of a shot at the quarterback here tonight. But well, Giovanni Visa, you talk about a week that he had last week, you know, tied the NCAA record seven touchdown passes in a half. A lot of guys go their career and don't get that many. And a freshman record of eight touchdown passes in the game against Navy. But as you've alluded to, a disappointing day as they lost to Paul Johnson in his Navy midshipman, 74 to 62. Inside handoff. Out to the 45-yard line as they'll get it to Thomas. Jamario still trying to claw for yard. I'm sure the whistle is blown. And they'll finally uh, stop it as McKinnon and uh, Thomas. Well, you know have seen each other throughout their career so far in the Sun Belt. 
exchange yeah. glances. Yeah, in, in <laughs> fact, you know, these two teams, they're 8-8 eight eight against each other right. in their history. So uh, somebody's going to gain the advantage here tonight. Arkansas State has won the last two in a row. They are 5-3 and three here at Jonesboro. So North Texas trying to turn a little history back in their favor here. First and 10 on the carry by Thomas. 9-14 to go before halftime. 14-0 Main Green. That's the second audible now. <laughs> and the play clock is down to five. And they get it off with two. Visa looking. Big rush is on. He's down. Big rush is on as they got that defensive line. And that time it was Curtis Bonds, a senior out of Dallas. Sam Houston High School gets the big sack that time as he had nothing but the quarterback in his sights. Watch the spin move that number 91 makes right there. He makes a great spin move on the guard on, on Santiago. Here's a great shot of it. Watch it. Ooh, oh, yeah. what a great spin move right Ooh. there. Man, you can teach that, but unless you can execute it that way, it's a difficult one to do. A big uh, loss on the play. It's second down and 21. So a big play that time by Bonds, one of the 17 seniors saying so long to Indian Field tonight. This time the screen is set up to the near side, but it's not going to do much. As a matter of fact, they may get just barely back to the line of scrimmage with Thomas surrounded by Indians. You know, this has been a pretty good offensive show by North Texas, but with really under eight minutes to go in the first half, they only have 14 points. I mean, that, that's below their average. They, they score. Uh, they scored very rapidly. Empty backfield for North Texas. Visa with trips to his left, the wide side. Two wide receivers to the near side, the short side of the field, and he automatizes with a play clock down to six. And okay. here comes Arkansas State changing. And then they, you're exactly right. Then they check to a blitz, and here they come. Then they pulled out at the last second. They swing it to the outside. They get a little running room, but it falls down in a hurry as they get it out to the far side. Uh, Stickler, I believe, was the receiver. No, it was Fitzgerald again. It was Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, and he had a lot of, take a look at this now, missed tackle right here. And that was Johnson that missed the tackle. That doesn't happen often. Stickler was coming back trying to throw the block right in front of Fitzgerald, but didn't get there in time, and Fitzgerald Gains a few of those yards back, but it's fourth and 15 in kick time. Travis Spencer will hit it around his own 33-yard line. Gets a boomer out of there. A little wind at his back. And Tompkins will make the catch. Got a little bump, and the flag is down. Well, fair catch in at first. No question. He made contact. So Dawson, who blocked the field goal try, is going to get credited with the infraction. As he comes down on special teams, covers and gets contact with Tompkins. So my bad, my good. He's got uh, one and one now. Uh, you, hey, you'll take that block field goal anytime. We'll, we'll let him have a little ten-yard penalty. That's no big deal. And that's the discussion going on with the officials. Kick catch interference on the kicking team, number 48. That's a 15-yard penalty. 15. First down. So you had 15 yards here, Coach. You think about that's the plus. You think about the negative they had with the 10 yards and the holding call when they had the ball at the four-yard line. And again, a good job by Tompkins uh, getting a little bump there and then finally making the catch, but again, was not given clearance to get a good shot at catching the ball without contact. Good concentration by Tompkins. You know, the, the surprising thing to me is that Arkansas State has not been able to run the ball effectively tonight. Uh, you know, North Texas for the season has given up an average of 6.1 per rush. Arkansas State has averaged 4.4 per rush. So Hewitt now has checked into the lineup for Arkansas State as Travis Hewitt. We'll see if he can get something done here. For ASU under center, and he hands it off to Arnold, who tries that running game. There's a yellow hanky down on both sides of the field as the ball will be carried from a 33 out to around the 38-yard line, but this one looks like it may come back. Yeah, and I think that the right end uh, for North Texas jumped the gun just a little bit. Now, was he drawn offside? That's what the officials uh, here will uh, straighten out. Coach, interesting move here with uh, Corey Leonard. Offense not awesome. doing much. On the defense, number 90. That's a five yard penalty. Remains first down. So, first and five now. Now you make the change with Hewitt coming in. He's a veteran. He's been there before for this team. Yeah, and of course, he started a game earlier this season against Florida International. 
uh, when Corey Leonard uh, could not go. Now, we don't know whether Corey Leonard has been injured or this is just a coach's decision to make this change. Uh, not sure exactly what's happened here. You had started one this year. He started the first four last year, including a win over Army before Leonard took over out of the shotgun. Hewitt throws it to the outside, and that one's knocked away. Another good defensive coverage on the far side by Newendine. Newendine out of Houston and a transfer from Baylor. 6 1, 200 pound, just got his hand there at the last moment. Yeah, that was excellent coverage by Newendine. Second down. Still five to go here by North uh, by Arkansas State. And you know when we watched the play uh, referring to North Texas against University of Louisiana Monroe excellent defense that night winning 31 21 in their early win of the year. But then they've kind of been up and down defensively. Leonard has had trouble with him tonight. Does Hewitt is in here for Arkansas State. Here comes the end around to Tompkins. Tompkins running into oh. trouble and then he is nailed. Oh, I mean to tell you, he got nailed from behind, and uh, 94 Gilmore, who may be challenging for our defensive player of the game, and this one really makes a big hit. As that time, Tompkins thought he might go back across about the field. Boy, hit that. Just watch uh, Gilmore at 250, right? Oh, oh, my. Wow. <laughs> That's why we have those parabolical mic guys, to get that kind of noise <laughs> out of the field. Gilmore just nails him. Third down, short yardage here for ASU. Coach, they got to keep the drive alive. North Texas is really kind of taking control of this. They five man down for North Texas to try to put the pressure on Hewitt. Hand off. And there's going to be oh, no place to run. Withers was the first guy to reach him in the hole and throws him back that time. And that's going to be depending on the spot as tempers start to flare just a bit. You know, and, and Aaron Weathers has been a great safety at North Texas, but he played very poorly last week yep. against Navy. When you're playing an option team and the safety doesn't have one solo tackle, uh, that's not good. Brown is a ball carry here. Right there is the line of scrimmage. Boy, that's a nice fill by Weathers. Got some good help. And again, the middle linebacker Mendoza, Derek out of a Hereford, Texas. Start as a freshman, his first game went into Texas uh, Longhorn Stadium, playing for North Texas, and uh, looked around and said, "Uh oh, I haven't had this many people watch me play football in my whole life." Yep. And they were all watching then as North Texas uh, lost heavily to Texas, but they, he said, "I grew up quite a bit after going in and seeing what that is all about." And they stretch the chain. Is it enough? But <laughs> when they have to get down that tight, it's about a, a link short, I think. Well, now you have a uh, five minutes to go. You're down 14 to nothing. And you're not in good field position to give up the football here, coach, but uh, got to roll the dice sometime. I, I go for it right yep. here every single time. No question. You're down 14 to nothing at home. You're being really embarrassed a little bit. Your offense is being embarrassed. And again, I give Ron Mendoza, the North Texas defensive coordinator, and this North Texas defense a lot of credit, man. They. A short, a very short work week. The boy sees Steve Roberts right there. Now he's getting fired up yeah. on the sideline. Well, he's really been talking to the linesman about the spot because he felt that they uh, got, uh, as we say, the right foot, left foot spot, and it's Hewitt trying to just push it ahead behind his big uh, center and the two guards, Lockley, along with Coates. He got it. And Reeve. And they got enough as they pushed it down towards the 44 yard line. Now, you know, this is so interesting. You just really don't know. You know they could be upset with Corey Leonard with some of the audibles he's made. Here, take a look at it right here. No question about it. Nice job of the offensive line coming off, puts his head down, gets it. You know, he, he may have, uh, have uh, missed a couple audibles. He did have a lot of high throws yep. early in the game in particular. Maybe they're just trying to settle, settle him, him down, down a little yep. bit. Yep. yep. First and 10 to go is Hewitt is still operating at the quarterback spot here for Arkansas State. Young man out of Baldwin, Missouri, sets back in the pocket, throws to DeJanette. That is going to be complete at the 48 yard line. DeJanette did a good job of coming back on that play as Bush was on the cover for North Texas, but DeJanette made a nice comeback to get the ball. Yeah, and, and watch, this ball is thrown low where it's very difficult for the defender to get to the ball. Nice job by Travis Hewitt. You know, as a backup coming in and being ready to play and yeah. coming in and performing and executing. You never know when the coach is going to call your number. You got to be ready. 
Tight end goes to the right hand side. That is going to be David Johnson. Haven't used him tonight. Hewitt fumbles the ball in the round. And with that fumble, Topkin's going to be thrown back for a huge loss. And guess what? They have had this guy all over the field tonight. That again is Chapman. Boy, Chapman uh, just showed great eyes as a defensive end. You know, I'm always talking about eyes and vision, but this is a great job of Chapman seeing that. Uh, really, Tompkins had no chance. That's just great defense. Had such a timing play, too, and it threw Tompkins off because he didn't know to go after the ball from the fumble <laughs> or keep running, and when he hesitated, yep. he who hesitate was lost, and Chapman made uh, mincemeat of him as he drops him for a big loss. Third down and 15 now by the Indians. Hewitt back in the pocket. He's airing it out. A long pass upfield. That'll be incomplete. And he was trying to get at the Topkins uh, on the end around a moment ago. And this time tries to air it out as he was running full speed ahead up the field. And now it brings up kick time for sure for the Indians. You know, and again, the biggest difference I see in this North Texas defense, and, and I give uh, Ron Mendoza, the coordinator, credit. They're being much more aggressive. They're playing much more man-to-man -man coverage, which is what they wanted to play initially. Didn't feel that maybe they had the, the right personnel to fit their defensive package, but uh, they're playing a bunch of man tonight and have played it well. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Roman, Whoa. this one's going to be blocked. That's so a the touchdown. special teams, they've got a man on the run at the 10, down to the 5, down to the 4-yard line, and another big play here by the special teams has resulted in a ball down again at the 5-yard line. They'll Chris, spot it at the 4. Chris Neal's the one that recovered it. I thought he was going to score. Chris but, uh, Neal's carries it down to the 4-yard line, and again, another big play as the redshirt freshman out of Kaufman, Texas, picks this ball up. Caught from behind and brought down at the four yard line. Antoine Bush is the one that blocked mm. it. And uh, you know, you talk about turning the tables now. That's a that's a blocked field goal. Now a blocked punt. Wow. It's almost like we're watching uh, Ricky Bustle's club down at the uh, University of Louisiana Lafayette with their great propensity to block kicks. But North Texas has done a great job of field goal blocked and now a punt. And they're in great position to get another score here in the first. First half as they hand off up the middle, Thomas, and he's got a touchdown, Main Green, and they go on the lead now 20 to nothing at Arkansas State. Absolutely amazing. Incredible, incredible turnaround for this North Texas team. Uh, coming off the crushing defeat, you know, and Sam, I've always felt here we take a look at the replay here. There's the zone read, there's the give, and of course, Jamario Thomas runs with a lot of nice forward lean. So the extra point, if they can make it, will take a 21 to nothing lead, and they do as Moreland is perfect tonight. Three for three. That, by the way, makes him 30 of 31 for the year, as he has really done a good job in coming in and kicking as a freshman out of 40 Texas. North Texas on the road. They've got a 21 nothing lead. Hey. Did you know you could get paid to create the kind of video games you love to play? With the right education, you could create cool characters, plan their missions, and decide the rules of play. Demand for video games is on the rise. That could mean more job opportunities. You could work as an animator, game analyst, or game programmer. Take your future to another level. Call Westwood College now. Train online, 800-971-6098. Call now. Jed Clampett, a poor mountaineer barely keeping his family fed, when in the summer of 63, he was shooting at some food, becoming a millionaire overnight. Soon afterward, he loaded up his truck and moved to Beverly Hills. I was suspicious of this whole Texas tea theory. A new investigation reveals that in the summer before Jed moved away from there, he switched his car insurance to GEICO, saving a substantial sum of money. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hey, look, it's the Subway Big Philly cheesesteak. Can we get one? Not now. Chris is late for his practice. Oh, come on. It's got their new juicy steak and double cheese, and you know how I love cheese. I want that sandwich. I want that Subway sandwich. No. Oh, that's real mature, John. Yeah, Dad. Grow up. <laughs> you grow up. People really, really want the Subway Big Philly cheesesteak, piled with tender Philly-style steak, loaded with double cheese, and then fresh toasted to really satisfy. So good, you'll beg for more. Pick one up today. Of 
Geico sponsors Mike's race car because they ensure everything race car fans love. RVs, motorcycles, ATVs. I'll tell you one thing they can ensure. Lauren Wallace, because Lauren Wallace is made of lightning. Those guys are like, hey, where's Lauren? He was just here a minute ago. I'm 100 miles away, son. Ready to strike. Geico, saving you money on insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. Offensive line coach Darren Hiller really talking to his offensive line because uh, they've had some real gapping holes tonight that has cost them. And they blocked a field goal, now block punt, and the running and passing game for ASU non existent as they trail 21 to nothing here, coach. Yeah, it, you know, this is just a, a shocking uh, first half to me. You know, I, I, I'm shocked at the special teams' uh, domination by North Texas. I, I really, you know, just when you think you, you think you know, you don't. I really thought Arkansas State would have an advantage on the special team, but no, absolutely the opposite. Moreland kicking to Tony at the 10. Tony's got some running room at the 25, out to the 35-yard line. Boy, he was streaking up the field at the 25-yard line, but again gives ASU some good field position again. And let's see if they can do it. Looks like Leonard's going to be coming back into the game. At least he's huddling with the offensive unit down below right now. And I think it's a good move a lot of times when you have a quarterback struggling in the game and yes he is uh, he is going in to, to just let him sit back and watch a series. Of course that series wasn't a lot of fun to watch no, either. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wow that, that, I mean that, this is just a shocking shocking turn of events here for Arkansas State at home on senior night. Well let's see if Darren Hiller has talked that offensive line to give him a little more time as there's a little Flare to the left side and a good throw and a good catch by D. Jeanette as he falls out of bounds. Leonard, another shot on a rope, but again, very little yardage gained against that defense of North Texas. Matter yeah, of fact, you know, none. And that ball popped out early there. And, uh, you know, they had the, they had the uh, Aaron Weathers, and they had the outside receiver wide open going down the sideline. I'm sure, sure that they will come back to that play and try to hit that outside receiver. Second down, 10 yards to go. Leonard. Getting the auto ball at the line of scrimmage. Wide side right's got the doubles. Play clock is down to five. Leonard going to try to run for it. Stumbles will get to the 40 yard line. And that's about all. A lot of linemen were ripping and grabbing at the ball, trying to knock it away for North Texas, but he held on to it for a good gain up to the 40. Gain of about four, make it the 41. A gain of five, third down and five. There's Coach Hiller on the sideline. Two for eight on third down conversions tonight for ASU, Coach. Not good. No, not good at all. That's David Gunn standing next to him, the running backs coach. Running backs tonight, of course, have been Arnold along with uh, Brown for the most part tonight. They throw in the middle. This is going to be enough for the first down. It's going to be complete and more as they'll chase this one all the way out of bounds on the near side. And Tompkins, who's been a very active player, not only returning kicks and punch, but also makes a good catch and gets a nice high five that time by Leonard on the catch and run. Yeah, but you know, he, he's just what I call a quick twitch player. I mean, he, he just has got a lot of burst and explosiveness and quickness right there. Good stiff arm. Hey, we're talking just a sophomore coach, so he's got a lot of maturity left to go here at ASU. Leonard now with that first down and ASU's offense working a little here. This time they come underneath and another reception will get some more yardage this time. It's Brown out of the backfield and Preston making only his 14th catch of the year but has a touchdown off the receptions. Will make a big one there in Arkansas State. On two plays coach they put it almost as much as they've had the whole first half. Well you know North Texas now has played again in a you know, near a two minute situation has played a lot of zones on this series and uh, Corey Leonard is making play you know and notice every one of his throws now has been right on target this series. Well you saw the 77 yards 24 came on that last pass play to Brown and sets up the first down at the 31. Brown stays in as the lone running back. Dejanet is the wide receiver left. They give it to Brown. Cuts back nicely at the 20 to the 15 to 10 5. Touchdown Arkansas State. 31 yard run by Preston Brown. And I mean to tell you, he made a cut in the middle of the field as a redshirt freshman to be rivaled by nobody in the country as well as he ran that one. Yeah, watch this cut this young man out of Smyrna, Tennessee makes right here. Watch this cut. Wow. Boy, he left the safety in the dust. 
That's a great move in particular by a young football player, 5'10, 195 pound, red shirt freshman. Araka will try to add the extra point. The left footer kicking out of Scrabble's hole. And again, that one came very close to being blocked as well, but it's up and through. And Arkansas State in only five plays goes 64 yards to score. And coach, that's a very positive move by this offensive ASU to get themselves on the board. Yeah, and again, a great move by a, a young football player. And I noticed on that extra point that Arako attacked the ball. That's the word that, that coaches use for a kicker. You have to attack the ball as it comes to the tee. If you wait till it's on the tee, uh, that then you're taking the chance of getting it blocked by the outside rusher and that's really what happened on that field goal block by the way Preston is a redshirt freshman was not eligible for my all air team by the way but he was pretty close <laughs> not bad see he's a redshirt free he's got three more years the honorable mention he's honorable just a mention. young yeah, player that's, that's not bad it'll grow it will <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas State needed to do one thing to get positive on the board North Texas has done everything they needed to do and that's to put 21 points on the board their special teams have blocked a field goal try to punt. Their offense with the visa had been just dynamite throwing and running the ball, and they blended that pretty good here tonight. Well, they did. And now, after that last series, Arkansas State is averaging 4.8 per rushing attempt. Even though they're down 21 to 7, they can't give up on the run part of their offense because this has really been the problem area for North Texas this year. Brian Sheffield out of Plano, Texas. I know he is happy to play against North Texas. By the way, Arocco from Grand Prairie, both playing against North Texas right there near their hometown. This one is fielded, and again, they'll get Mosley on the carry. Mosley at the 25, out to around the 28 yard line. Micah Mosley, one of the running backs for North Texas, gives them a good field position. Coming up on our Regents Bank halftime report, we'll say so long to the Indians as we farewell to them. Arkansas State President Dr. Leslie Wyatt will join it, and we'll have the Gatorade stats and highlights. All of that coming up at our halftime break. Don't go away. All brought to you by Regents Bank here from Indian Field in Jonesboro. You know, you think about having to change the mascot, but look at all of the stuff you got to change. It's no longer Indian Field. It'll be whatever the new name is going to be. Yeah, and, uh, and it, it's really interesting some of the names they've come up with, and I, I think we, we could probably uh, a couple, have a couple additions to that That's list. right. That's right. We'll look at all 12 of those uh, suggested names coming up. All right, North Texas first and 10. Inside handoff, this is Mosley. I run after returning that kick. He'll carry it out uh, beyond the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Good defensive stop up that time. Arkansas State kind of slanted to the outside. Good uh, knockdown that time by Hickman. Also coming up to help out again. They've uh, got a lot of people linebacker wise. Hardy's been playing very, very well. And Arkansas State wants to stop the clock and preserve some time with a minute 20 left to go before halftime. Yeah, and of course, you know, because they're playing so much dime defense, uh, you've got a lot of defensive backs who are playing tonight. They're playing the whole football game, basically. Uh, you know that, that aren't used to playing that much and that affects their special teams play and then of course you know the frustrating thing is you've got two linebackers who are used to starting and playing the whole game they're sitting on the bench the whole night they're not hitting the field but you know North Texas has come with at least four wide receivers and many times five and uh, you know just from a pure coaching viewpoint uh, in watching the game from up here the way North Texas spreads the field uh, man, it really stretches your zones just by alignment. I think Arkansas State has to play more man-to-man. -man. Second down, five to go now with the clock will be activated at a buck 20 on the snap of the ball. 17 on the play clock here for Visa. Giovanni, the freshman out of San Antonio, takes the snap. Gives the handoff to Moe to the outside. There'll be no place to run as again he's chased down. They get some good rushing up again, and that time it is going to be Brian Flagg. I was just about to make the mention that their two outside uh, tackles, Carrington along with Flagg, have been rather quiet. But Brian Flagg makes a huge play here by the Indians. Well, he gets really good penetration, comes under the offensive tackle's reach block, and, of course, penetration kills uh, running plays faster than anything else. Another timeout is taken this time, stopping the clock at a minute 10. As that'll wind up another one by ASU to stop the clock, and that loss will take it back to a third down and 10 at the 28 yard line. You know, Flagg is a guy that uh, really wanted to get back in the lineup. He was injured last year and didn't get to play. Young man out of Ripley, Tennessee. 
In 05, he started 10 of the 11 games. So anytime that year is taken away from you, Coach, I know you've been around enough players. If they really want to play, that is a tough, tough situation for them. Well, it's a very, very difficult year for them to go through. And uh, you, you really test, uh, you know, how important football is to you when you go through something like that. No question about that. And also the strength and conditioning coaches uh, kind of want to see how dedicated you are in the uh, strength uh, room. And they said that uh, they he was one of the best as he wanted to really get back in. And now they're starting uh, right tackle here defensively for ASU. But they've got their work cut out for them. They're down 21 to 7. We have seen the ball aired out tonight by the mean green, but We've been most impressed the way that uh, Visa and the offensive folks, head coach, Coach Dodge in particular, really kind of handle this offense for North Texas tonight. Trips to the right wide side. He's on a third down and 10. High snap. He'll keep it on the carry. Gets one block, but he'll roll out to around the 33-yard line. Clock will roll at a minute seven, and now it's going to be stopped again, and Arkansas State will take their final time out of the half. And I really would be surprised if Arkansas State does not come after this punt uh, in this situation. I'm sure that was the reason for the timeout right there. They want to make sure Coach Roberts coaches all the special teams himself. And he's got that punt return unit huddled up with him on the sideline. And I, I really wouldn't think that they'll come after this punt pretty good. Coach, we made mention that, of course, it'll be a new mascot here. They have had a selection committee that have been working diligently. Uh, ever since it was ruled that they could not use the Indians. And here are some of the names that have been nominated. As a matter of fact, these are the names that have been nominated. The 12, you can go through and kind of pick your favorite. And uh, we've got a couple of favorites picked out ourselves, but the A's, the Black Wolves, the Ridge Riders, the Ridge Runners, the Thunderbirds, the Mustangs, the Mallards, the Express, the Red Storm, the Red Dragon, the Diamondback, or Diamonds. Who wants you know, to be a Mallard? Come on. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like Red Wolves. I kind of like that one. I like that. You kind of like the Red Storm as well one yeah. time. Yep. All right. Here it is. It's going to be kick time, and they are lined up to come after it. And here they come. And he gets it out of there. Good kick is wow. off to Toa Spencer. Drive Tompkins way back to his own 20. Got some running room up to the 30. Gets it out to around the 33-yard line. And good coverage again by that kick team. And again, that time coming up to make a good stop on the special teams is Brandon uh, Monroe, who's a former starting linebacker, comes up on the special teams to make the stop. You know, there's a flag down. I, I thought, I thought that he made a, a, a very, a, a, a very minimal fair catch signal, but I, maybe I'm not right. Let's see. Did we hear that before in another game? Coach? <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Sure did. Here is the discussion going on by the officials. That's not the call, though. The call is blocking the back. So, again, Arkansas State, a little bit of shooting themselves in the foot tonight, down by 21 to 7. During the return, block in the back, number 20 on the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty. First down. Block in the back by Montez Harrison. Does he make a first? Ooh. <laughs> See, <laughs> he said, I'm not sure, so I'll just put it halfway up out here. Take a look right here at the block. Oh, yeah, that, that, there's a definite block in the back. That was on Weathers. And uh, that block in the back got, uh, well, uh, number one is Corey Leonard, but I don't think that was Corey Leonard on that team. I think that was probably another number one. Which, by the way, it's interesting. In uh, college football, they are able to use uh, uh, well, same numbers, numbers yeah. uh, uh, as far as special teams numbers are concerned. Speaking of Leonard, he's back Corey. in. Throws to the near side. Oh. It's caught by Dijonette. And the secondary man that time made a gamble and it didn't pay off as he had gone for the intercept and he jumped too quickly over Leonard's head for a 24 yard, excuse me, over DeJanette or a 24 yard catch. Wow, had he been somehow able to keep his feet there, he'd have scored because the DB was down on the ground. 24 yard reception moves it out to the 35. 49 seconds left to go before halftime. DeJanette. Again, approaching the thousand yards in receiving for a season. And again, a young player that has just really come alive here as far as catching the ball is concerned. And they throw it again to him. That time, a little slant across the middle. And it was just out of his reach, couldn't clean it up. Yeah, that was Maurice Holman, did a nice job of coverage. They're very aggressive in the zone coverage. Uh, that, that floor would have had to have been perfect. Jeanette again, a player that uh, had come on and uh, played very well for him. They expected him to be one of their top receivers, along with Tompkins. And also Kevin Jones was expected to be 
in this rotation. They haven't used the tight end David Johnson a lot. They'd expected to do more of uh, his use today, but now they've run more of the spread and taken the tight end out. Yep. Second down and ten. Leonard drops back. Pocket is there. Good time to throw. He throws over with a Tompkins. A diving catch as he'll be down at around the 37-yard line. Clock will be stopped to move the change after a 28-yard catch and run, and the clock stopped at 38. Well, they need about uh, a, a good 10 more yards to be in Arako's field goal range here. And again, out of the snap, Leonard. Clock winds. It's at 35 as Leonard catches, and oh. he is nailed. Oh, what a huge play again as they've got Gilmore just rushing from the outside, and Gilmore will get his second sack of the game, and he drops Leonard for a big loss. They'll lose eight on the play, second and 18, and Leonard just has to spike the ball to yep. stop the clock with 18 seconds. Boy, Gilmore, that's the second Woo. really big play he's made tonight. Take a look at the penetration on the right side of your screen now where Gilmore right there just clearly, be cleanly beats the tackle with an inside move. Well, Gilmore's had quite a night with a couple of sacks, and as we pointed out with that huge hit earlier in the game, and the young uh, sophomore out of Houston, Texas, has been coming on strongly. Had only 18 tackles coming to the game. He got three in this game alone and two sacks. Leonard back, looking, looking, runs out of the pocket. He can run for some room. Now throws. It's going to be incomplete up the far sideline. Try to swing that ball out to the far sideline and just in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Chris Miller. That ball was hard thrown again by Leonard, stopping the clock at 10 seconds. And it'll bring up a fourth down play here. Yeah, take a look at this, though. His, uh, man, he, he can really gun the ball <laughs> on the run, but, you know, he, he's got to learn when to take a little bit off the yep. football at times. It you, know, I, you know, we talked earlier about the visa where the game slows down. It, it looks to be right now just watching Corey Leonard in this first half. He has to slow down the football game. He's trying to do things too fast. Here's the fourth down play as Leonard is back to throw. Good protection keeping Gilmore off his back. He's throwing to the end zone. It'll be up for grabs. A lot of white shirts down there and intercepted by North Texas. So the main green as the horn golfed off will make the intercept at the goal line and will head to the locker room with a 21 to 7 lead. And what a game they have played so far here in the game. Big intercept that time by Maurice Holman, the linebacker, going back to play well. Coach, it's been a good first half for North Texas. Speaking of halftime, Chris Temple will join us. We'll visit with the president of the university, stats and all kinds of things at halftime. We'll be back after these messages. When my doctor told me my high blood pressure may have led to my erectile dysfunction, I was surprised. When I found out my diabetes could have led to my ED, I learned there was help. My doctor told me about Levitra. Levitra treats ED, even in men with high blood pressure or diabetes. Ask your doctor if you are healthy enough for sexual activity. If you have heart problems, uncontrolled high blood pressure, or are on alpha blocker therapy, talk to your doctor before taking Levitra. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease in vision or hearing, stop taking Levitra and call your doctor right away. Doctors know Levitra helps treat ED, even in men with high blood pressure and in men with diabetes. Over a million men just like me have already taken Levitra. You should talk to your doctor about Levitra. The more you know about ED, the more you'll want to know about Levitra. And the breakaway, nobody back. That's an easy two. Syracuse leads by five. SNY covers key Big East matchups. He goes in for the dunk. Number one, number one, number one, number one. Number two. Number two, 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 two. It's giving New York sports fans some real together time. That was harsh. SNY, the best of the Big East, and more. Get your New York sports here. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, professional race car driver here with cab driver Artie. Professional cab driver. Sorry, professional cab driver Artie. Drinking responsibly is knowing your limits. If you are over yours, ask Artie or someone like Artie to get you home safely. To learn more about drinking responsibly, go to beforeyoudrink.org. Would you get out of there?
The street games continue on SNY. I'm Kevin Harkin. Welcome to the street. This week, we head to Keyspan Park in Brooklyn to turn back the baseball clock and play the old ball game in old-time style. Then pick up the ball if you've got the guts. Throw it, catch it, go one in and one out because it's time for some dodgeball. The home of all things New York sports brings you the games from the streets of New York. Street Games, presented by Pontiac, tonight at 10 p.m., only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Hello, welcome to the Regions Bank Halftime Show. I'm your host, Sean Temple. We hope that you've enjoyed the first half of football between North Texas and Arkansas State. Now, the Indian safety Tyrell Johnson is one of the top defenders, not only in the Sun Belt, but in the nation. That could mean big bucks in this year's NFL draft. But now, as Eric Ritchie tells us, he's just working on finishing his senior season. Arkansas State's Tyrell Johnson entered this season with monster expectations like being ranked as the seventh best safety in the country by the Sporting News. So it was only fitting that he stepped up in big time matchups, nabbing interceptions against both Texas and Tennessee. I always like to look at those teams as, as opportunity. You know, I tell all the young guys on the team and stuff, hey, those, those, are, those are the games you go out there and get it done and show people, show not just the Sun Belt, because I, 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 me, you know, I'm a person that looks farther than the Sun Belt, you know, and I tell my team, you know, if you're trying to get it recognized nationally, here's the time to do it. Earlier this season, Johnson broke the Sun Belt Conference record for career tackles. A hard-hitting ball hawk? You bet. But his coach says that's only part of the story. He's an outstanding football player, but the thing that uh, you really like about Tyrell is he is the model student athlete. Uh, he behaves himself in a manner that you're proud uh, that he represents your program. He gives great effort in the classroom and is very successful there and will graduate before his senior year of college football. And then on the football field, a tremendous tackler, a guy who plays with a tremendous amount of passion every week. Uh, he's the guy you want on your football team, no doubt. Coach, uh, Coach Roberts, he reminds me a lot of myself. He has a lot of passion. He has a lot of feeling about the, just everything, not just the game, but just everything, life in general. And that's what I like about Coach Robert because he, he, he teaches you that everything counts. You know, you don't just, you don't just have to do it with Coach Roberts. You know, everything counts with Coach Roberts, and that's why I like his strategy and his approach to the game. A Bronco Nagurski Award watch list member, Johnson comes from an athletic family. His mother was a world-class sprinter. But Tyrell says he's faster, even in her prime. Uh, she, she, you know, she has the same competitiveness that I have, so she thinks that she, she smoked me. But I, uh, I tell her, no, it's not. That's, that'll never happen. You know, prime or not. <laughs> For the Sun Belt Conference halftime show, I'm Eric Ritchie. Thank you very much, Eric. Let's now turn our attention to a couple of student athletes who are as talented on the field as they are in the classroom. It's this week's Scholar Athletes of the Week. First from Arkansas State, Matt Reby, an offensive lineman from El Dorado, Arkansas, a preseason third-team All-Sun Belt Conference pick and a semifinalist for the 2007 Dratty Trophy, which recognizes the best individual for combined academic success, football performance, and community leadership. He graduated in spring of 2007 with a bachelor's degree in sports management and a 3.27 GPA. He's now doing graduate work, earning his MBA. From North Texas, senior outside hitter Katie Prokoff, who carries a 3.78 GPA in speech language pathology. The unquestioned leader of the Mean Green volleyball team ranks second in school history with more than 3,700 attacks and is third with more than 1,200 kills. She graduated in May of 2007 and currently is enrolled in graduate courses at North Texas. Congratulations to this week's Scholar Athletes of the Week. We hope you've enjoyed the Regents Halftime Show. Our next Sunbelt broadcast, our final one of the year, will come to you from South Florida, Saturday, November 24th, when FAU and FIU tangle up in the Shula Bowl. For now, though, we'll head to a quick break, but we'll be back with more football from Jonesboro, Arkansas, right after this. There's an easier way to get where you're going in life. Even if you're starting your second one. At the new Regions, you'll find more support today for the tomorrow you're dreaming about. Isn't that what you should expect from your bank? Regions, it's time to expect more. 
pre-Katrina, we have 177 youth football teams. After Katrina, we lost field lights, we lost posts, we lost facility roofs. Flintstone, an employee of Slate Rock Gravel Company, his wife Wilma, a stay-at-home mom. Yet on this working man's salary, how did Wilma afford a necklace made of huge rocks? Mr. Slate pays well, but he doesn't pay that well. An investigation would reveal that Fred had the Flintmobile insured with Geico, saving the couple untold amounts of money. Their friendship with the Rubbles would soon become strained. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Welcome to our halftime report brought to you by Regents Bank. We're glad to join you back here at Indian Stadium in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Right now, North Texas jumped out to a 20 run nothing need, but uh, the Indians have come back to score a touchdown and trail 21 to 7. It's always nice to come to Jonesboro, and particularly when our host happens to be the president of the university, Dr. Leslie Wyatt, who's alongside of us. And, Doctor, I know you got to be happy with that score that kind of got yourself on the board in the first at half. At last, at last. Uh, we still have a half to go. We'll see how we level the field. One of the things about uh, Dr. Wyatt is the fact he's not only the president of this university but the president of the entire Arkansas State system and uh, that's a lot of hats to wear there. It is but it's a good job. Don't, don't let anybody fool you. It's a good job. We have a system that is composed of four primary campuses, five secondary campuses. We have relationships with four other universities in the state and five other community colleges. So there's a lot of opportunity. It's a good job. Doctor, a lot of uh, noise has been made here having to drop the Indians. It's almost like, uh, oh, my, what a tradition is being dropped. And your selection committee, we've got uh, 12 names that they have uh, suggested. Uh, what's the timetable on getting that uh, adopted here at ASU? Sam, we started about a year and a half ago with the notification from NCAA that we would need to make that change. We've been going through a process that will be uh, massive and comprehensive in its scope. You mentioned at the outset that we're in Indian Stadium. Those are the sorts of things that will have to be changed along with the mascot. So we've been in the process here of talking with constituents around the state, around the nation. We've had 12 different constituent groups suggesting names. A uh, selection committee has narrowed that down to 12, and over the next month or so, uh, we will identify the final name that will become the mascot for ASU. You know, you talked about changing Indian Stadium. Just think of all of the uh, the merchandise and paraphernalia. It also has to be changed with the mascot as well. Dr. Wyatt, when I come to ASU, another thing that I'm very impressed with, let me throw a little applaud in your way, is the fact that you always seem to be so active around campus, not only athletically but uh, ac academically. Anything, something's going on, you really like to be there hands-on, don't you? Well, we have a great uh, good fortune here. We're the only university in a broad geographical area, so there's a lot of chance for involvement. The university is very much integrated in the life of the community and the region, so there are a great many opportunities that come our way. A university is a great place. Uh, it always has new students coming, uh, parents coming along, people in the community support us. So it's uh, just a great opportunity to be involved. It's not a lonely role. It's an opportunity to represent the institution and all the people associated with it. Uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be a part of higher education and to be a part of this university in this place. It's, it's a nice place. One of the nice things about the Southern Conference, all of our universities start from the inside. Good people, good leaders, and certainly at ASU in very good hands. Again, with Dr. Leslie Wyatt. It's always a pleasure to come to Jonesboro, and good luck in the second half. Thank you. Welcome back. We're at halftime with North Texas in the lead with a score of 21-7. to We'll find out if the Indians have one more. Are they scowling now, or will they have a smile on their face at the end of this? We'll be back with more halftime highlights and stats in a moment. Coming up on Geico Sports Night, busy day off the field for baseball. Barry Bounds gets news that might affect his playing future. And are the Yankees any closer to locking up A-Rod and Moe? Geico Sports Night at 6-10-1. Hey, Jets fans. 
That's right, I'm talking to you. As soon as our game is over, just grab the remote and turn to SNY. Listen to these guys. Watch Jets Post Game Live after every Jets game this season, only on SNY. See, it's not that hard. Get your New York sports here. Welcome to Verizon Fios. It's pure, undiluted movies, music, and sports. They flow on light straight to your home. 100% digital fiber optics makes videos and music come alive and takes high-def TV to a higher level. Movies and exclusive programs are at your fingertips. Record a show on one TV and view it on any other. And you don't just watch sports, you feel them with picture clarity that's unmatched anywhere. Send photos from your PC to your TV. Play games at blazing speeds on the fastest internet connection available. The network we call Verizon Fios. Get Fios TV, internet, and unlimited calling for less than $95 a month. Sign up now and you'll receive a free sharp 19-inch LCD HD TV. Call 1-877-444-FIOS. Verizon Fios, the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. The off-season is here, so it's time to heat up the hot stove. The Mets year-round TV home dish is the hot stories, the hot rumors, the hot wheeling and dealing. Free agency, trades, all the moves and analysis can be found here along with news from all around the league. Kevin Burkhardt is your host and he'll welcome special guests throughout the winter as the Mets fill in the blanks and put together an amazing 2008 roster. Mets Hot Stove presented by Chef's Diet every Monday at 6.30 p.m. with an encore at 11 p.m. only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Welcome back at halftime here at Indian Stadium, the final Indian uprising as they call it. Of course, the Indian family and, of course, the Indian dancer encouraging all of the fans to get on their feet as they celebrate the Indians. But after this game, their final home game, there'll be no more Indians as the mascots. Sam Smith, along with the head coach of the uh, uh, Rutgers folks who kind of put that program on the map and also the National Football League as a defensive coordinator, Doug Graber. And, Doug, defense has been kind of a, a surprise tonight for North Texas. That's been the key here tonight. Well, it really has totally been the key to this game. And, of course, the, the block kicks. I mean, the block punt was huge. And uh, the block field goal was huge. But, uh, you know, I've always felt to play in a Thursday night game that the team that had the travel was at a disadvantage. But North Texas, uh, not for them tonight. As far as the highlights are concerned, let's take a look at it. And it's interesting enough that North Texas has been scoring through the air so much. They went to the ground tonight, and Jamario Thomas scores a couple of times. Well, Jamario Thomas is a quality back. And, of course, you know, when they get inside the 10-yard line, uh, uh, they have to be able to run the football, and he, what a nice dimension he adds. On the defensive side, the guy we've talked about a lot, this, of course, is Terrell Johnson with the intercept for ASU. That one didn't result in any points, but later on, they did get the run. Preston Brown scores for ASU for their only score of the first half. Made a great inside move right there, no question. Now let's take a look at our Gatorade halftime stats and of course there's some interesting numbers and look at the bottom the red zone is uh, now North Texas has gone in the red zone and they've scored all three times they got there. Coach. Yeah, three for three. You know, the, the total yards are of course yep. obviously about the same. In fact uh, Arkansas stayed ahead. But again the key stat that doesn't show there are the block kicks and, and they were huge huge in that half. We'll highlight those coming up in just a moment. What happened? What happens here in the second half for ASU? What do they got to do, coach? I, I, I think that ASU has to run the football. They have to do a, a, a good job of keeping their defense off the field. Uh, if, if they could get a turnover or two, that would be huge for them. Well, it's 21 to 7. What Texas on the road looking for only their second win of the year. While well, Arkansas State goes for win number five. Will it be Arkansas State or North Texas on the road? These fans, you can see even an Eagle fan here, wants their team for North Texas to continue to win. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? Come on, what's your secret? Would you take lessons? You got your own pro? Yep, I got a bunch of them. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Get 12 months of Golf Digest with easy to follow tips and techniques for just $14.97. Order today and receive this DVD absolutely free. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200.
Gatorade Sports Science Institute. We test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Every day at Golden Flake, it all starts with a special premium potato that longs for something more, more flavor and more crunch. Seeking a life of delicious variety and guaranteed freshness in every chip and every bag. That's what Golden Flake brings to the table. For us, these are the good times. Finding our way to your neighborhood grocery and into your basket headed home. Turning potatoes into the life of your party. Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. Well, 21-7, to 7, North Texas with the lead here as we get ready to start the third quarter. As Coach has pointed out, the special teams have played uh, big roles in this one with a couple of block kicks. And uh, Steve Roberts, not a happy camper about either one of those because they both went against the Indians. And of course, it, and he coaches. A, and that one there, I really would put on the kicker. He did not attack the ball. The timing was uh, too slow. But here's a breakdown by the uh, right wing back for Arkansas State. And uh, this really, in essence, uh, gave them a touchdown ball in three and a half yard line. Chris Neal returning it to the four yard line. That early uh, block was by Jermaine Dawson, a junior out of uh, Rockdale, Texas, made the block on the field goal that kept Arkansas State from even getting on the board. You take a look at the sideline and, of course, action going on for Arkansas State and for North Texas. And you can expect, of course, uh, Mager to still be on the sideline as Visa will have the ball. Now keep in mind that North Texas had the ball to start the first uh, quarter. So Arkansas State gets the ball offensively first. And I would imagine, Coach, coming out of that locker room, you just got to employ your offense. Hey, fellas, we're not going to win this game unless you do something right now. And you're going to take a look at the defense of North Texas that he's going against. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, the sacks have been a problem all year for Arkansas State. That guy right there. Uh, you know, he makes a couple of huge, huge plays, uh, Edric Gilmore, for them. And again, pressure on the quarterback, and there's Mr. Gilmore again. So the defense of Coach Todd Dodge will be killing on, and again, the offense of North Texas uh, doing a great job. And, of course, the offense for ASU has got to get something going, and they'll get the ball first as Coach Dodd. What do you think his comments at halftime to his team were? Are you got to just say, hey, fellas, we're doing good, then just keep it up, I guess, huh? Well, you know what? You know, when you've won one football game the whole season, you know, there's no need to get cocky here, that's for sure. But I'll tell you what, the, the, the defense of North Texas, and I give a lot of credit to Ron Mendoza, defensive quarter, much, much more aggressive, a, a much more, a lot more man-to-man -man coverage, a lot more blitzes. Uh, they have really caused some problems for Arkansas State. By the way, Brandon Tompkins, who uh, they'll be kicking off to as Thomas Moreland will be kicking off. Thompson Tompkins, that is, needs only eight more return yards to set a single season Sunbelt Conference record. And he, along with Tony, will be back to receive. There's Tompkins. Moreland's approach in our third quarter is underway, and they are kicking to Tompkins. He'll have it at around his six. And he's got those eight yards. He set a new record as he takes it to the 30. Still on his feet out to the 32. Swarmed under there. And again, good field position here by ASU. They just haven't been able to take much uh, control of it as Topkin again becomes the new Sunbelt Conference record holder for most return yards in a single season. Congratulations to Bernard. Well, now, you know, first of all, for Arkansas State, you've got to, you know, Corey Leonard, it, it did appear that he calmed down a little bit after they I took him out of the game. I think that's good for a quarterback. You just sit on the sideline, slow things down. Uh, you know, you get a different perspective. Uh, they need a big half out of him. But I'll tell you what, they cannot forget the running game here. They have to be able to run the football. Reggie Arnold and Preston Brown. Nine of 21, you see there as far as the uh, passing is concerned by Leonard. He swings one near side, gets to Tompkins after the 35 to the 37-yard line. And gets it out to the 38-yard line before Withers will make the stop for North Texas with 14.42 left to go here in the third quarter. North Texas again with a second down in their defense trying to stop Arkansas State. Again, Leonard back in there. Leonard, by the way, was uh, a minus one in net rushing. The rushing was 39 by Reggie Arnold with five carries. 
Preston Brown with a touchdown carried four times for 35. Hewitt in there for a couple of series one for two got two yards and Leonard a minus one in the rushing category. Leonard on the roll fakes once now buys some time has to run back to the near side. He's still got time to throw and does underneath to the 39 and out to around the 42 yard line. Boy, I tell you what, give credit to that offensive line because there was great opportunities before Brown catches the ball to be downfield here, Coach. Yeah, and a, and a good job of Leonard keeping the play alive. Uh, you know, he's, uh, again, a nice job of the offensive line uh, holding the protection. First down. Well, first down. We are delighted to be joined in the booth by Larry Lacewell. Larry, we're going to do a little dance. Let's go down towards the coach here because All we want right. to get a good shot at you oh, here. Oh, great, great. We're yeah. down in this end zone down here. We yeah. want to get a good – this is Larry Lacewell. People He's the all-time winningest coach in the history of ASU, and his record will never be broken as far as the coach of the Indians <laughs> coming. Right. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Leonard back to throw. Corey on the move. Good move to the 50. Cuts to the outside. Stiff iron will get him a few more yards. Then he's finally yanked down, and a flag comes flying in. I think that's a face pass. So Corey Leonard again will get that, plus the yardage there. And, Larry, I know you watch this program and uh, 69 victories here in this stadium and, of course, for the program. And, and you can see the program in pretty good hands now with Steve Roberts, I think. Well, I certainly can. I know Steve just pointed in this score right now, but people need to remember he was down about 29 points at the half against uh, Memphis State and won the game. But it's a it's a proud feeling when I look out here because uh, – a lot of things, a lot of things have changed uh, since I was here uh, back in 1979, and I, 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 I have another record too. I will be here. I think I'm the losingest coach in the history of school. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll never be broken, but uh, it's a sad night for me, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hate to see the word Indian go out because uh, I'll always remember being an Indian. Of course, Larry Curse uh, in the National Football League with the Dallas Cowboys as well. And, of course, a great, great career in the National Football League and in college watching, of course, his uh, team that he led to 69 victories get a first down here. And they're at the 39 of North Texas. And again, Corey Leonard fakes that handoff, takes to the right side, gets a good block in the corner. He's got the edge by Withers. Still turns it ahead to the 30, and another flag comes down. That's going to be an, another uh, holding penalty uh, by a wide receiver for Arkansas State, and they've come at crucial times in this game, Larry. Well, it really has, and uh, it's, you can't afford to do that. You only get so many bats against North Texas State. When they get the ball, they keep the ball, and you almost <laughs> get, you, 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 you get in a panic feeling uh, offensively. You really do. You, you get the ball, you think you got to go score with it, and, and I really do like Leonard. He's a sophomore, and I think you guys are going to see a lot of him in the next couple of years, and be better and better Holy and uh, but the, you, the offense, you, just, seven. you can't continue to do this penalty. you don't want to get long, neither team wants long yardage right that was Chris Miller was caught for a holding actually looked like a block in the back but that's where the flag comes down and it's unfortunate after another good run and another big uh, penalty against ASU and coach when you take a look at the ring of honor here you see all the great people that have been around Bill Davidson who we had the opportunity what? Hey, there yeah, yeah, look at there, AD coach. Uh, <laughs> I was a lot more coach than I was athletic director. I probably, anybody around here will attest to that. I was probably, uh, I think it was a guy named Bear Bryant that's from my hometown, Fordyce. We were both ADs yep. and uh, and uh, head coaches. He won a few more games than me. Not a lot more, though. You know, that's the one thing he said, you know, I like being the athletic director, but I love being a football coach. Here's a pass up field. Dejanette will make a great catch, and Leonard threw that one with a great bit of air under it. And Doug Braver, that's the best throw we've seen him throw tonight. Well, it's a, a little double route. Again, we, we had talked, they're playing a lot of man-to-man -man defense, and he ran a double route, a little hitch and go, and it, actually, if that ball had a little more air in it, he would have scored right there. But a big play for Arkansas State, Larry. Well, you know, North Texas is, is uh, playing a lot of man-for-man, -man, what I call man-for-man. -man. Yes. Quarters, and uh, they've got a lot of guts. They just sat there and say, Beat us deep, and this time they finally did. Right. Carty out of Bach was the normal safety back there was Roderick Cotton, number 24. You see how badly he was beaten on that play. As that time, Dijonette got behind him. First and 10 to go for the Indians. Here's the fake handoff as Leonard looking again. That one's batted down at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted, and I think that's going to be Gilmore once again, number 94. Yep. You know, and, and Larry, but being a you know coach and being in the National Football League, I got to say this right here. We're taking a look at Gilmore making another big play for North Texas, but you don't get enough credit for the success of the Dallas Cowboys. But all of us in the profession know 
personnel wise what you meant to that organization well i appreciate you appreciate you saying that and i'm so proud of him right now my chest sticks out uh, <laughs> I, I watch this kid out here leonard and, and honestly he reminds me i know people think i'm crazy he's got a little romo in him. yeah he does and uh he, he's got some maneuverability and speaking of maneuverability that is arnold touchdown indians 15-yard ramble that time by Reggie Arnold, and all of a sudden we're back in the game. 21-13 as the Indians get to pound the drums as they come with another touchdown with a point after to come. Let's take a look at it again. Nice hole by that offensive line. Yeah, just a simple little zone play. Makes a nice move there on the safety. And, uh, you know, that's the answer for Arkansas State in the second half. They have to be able to run the football. Well, you know, I, I told you just a moment ago, he reminds me of Romo a little bit. Now, I mean that in the fact that he, he can maneuver around. And so there was a scout in the press box. The press box asked me, said, uh, uh, a scout asked me, said, uh, what in the world was it y'all liked about Romo so much? And I said, let me tell you something. We'd liked him that much, we'd have drafted him. He was free agent. <laughs> that was, but, but it was a good free agent. Yeah, but see, I'm an 01 A guy, and he's an Eastern Illinois guy, so I had a good place in my heart for him. Well, they've called a timeout. Uh, Larry, before you have a chance to get away, we don't want to get away as we take a look at Arnold again taking the ball in for the touchdown. They're going to change the name from the Indians to something here. We've got the 12 names. Do you have a favorite out of these 12 that have come about? No, I really don't. I'm, I'm so brokenhearted that the Indians yeah. had to leave. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I coached at Oklahoma a long time. I know a lot of Indians. I want to go over and, I want to go over and campaign. I don't know. A's, Black Bull, Diamonds, Express, Mallards, Mustang. Mallards isn't bad. We we're, we got a lot of we got a lot of ducks or, and ridge runners. I lived on the ridge around here for a long time, and uh, I don't know. Somebody else is going to have to pick that. I, I'm an Indian, and uh, always will be. Well, one of the things about, did you have any moonshine when you were ridge running? Anyway? I did. That's right. I, I live right out here. Hey, you got to remember something. I'm from Fordyce, Arkansas. I, I'm, that, down there where I'm from, they really have a lot of that moonshine. Well, I, let me ask you one question now, but as we watch the extra point here. Uh, Tyrell Johnson, uh, we're going to have a, a commercial here, but think about that. We're going to talk about it. Certainly. Extra points up and good by Araco, and again we are back in the game here with a game going on as North Texas controlled the first half. ASU wanted the football to start the third. They got it and they scored 21-14. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels from rock to pop, hip hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. No other weekly financial publication moves the markets like Barron's. It provides the knowledge, insight, and foresight that allow you to stay one step ahead. Subscribe now and you'll also receive Barron's Online with its daily columns, market analysis, and tools like the Stock Screener and the Stock Grader. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and Barron's Online all for only $39. Call now, toll free, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. People are smart. They know the less money they sink into their mortgage, the more money they'll have in their pocket. With our Sleep Easy Loan, you get a 30-year fixed rate that lets you pay interest only for the first 10 years with no negative amortization. So you can borrow $200,000 for about $999 a month. Call the number on your screen and you can pay down your bills, purchase the home you want, or just walk around with pockets full of cash, if that's what you're into. So call us now. Ditech. People are smart. Another big boy from the Big East plays ball at SNY. Derek Character and Edgar Sosa lead number six Louisville as Rick Pitino and the Cardinals take on Jackson State. College basketball on SNY, presented by Infinity. Jackson State versus Louisville, Sunday at 1.30 on SNY. Chris Cotter here, Big Show on Daily News Live. A-Rod closer to joining the Yanks. Mariana Rivera, maybe not so close. Moose Johnson's going to be here in studio, and we'll talk to Earl the Pearl about the Knicks. It's all coming up, Daily News Live, tonight after Sports Night. Good look at Reggie Arnold coming to the half. He needed only 63 yards to go over 1,000 yards for the second consecutive year here for ASU. He chomped off 15 more with a touchdown run, and it's 21 to 14. Sam Smith, along with Doug Graber, and joined in the booth by Larry Lacewell, the all-time leading 
coach here at Arkansas State at least the, the all time for the Indians that'll never be broken the record here. That's, that's right. something you're proud of. We're not going to talk about that. Negative that's right. Coach. So the kickoff time here is Brian Sheffield will kick off for the Indians. Coach brought up a good name and one of those guys will be on defense here in a moment. That's Tyrell Johnson after this kick. And he's going to kick it deep. It comes to Mosley on the near sideline. He catches at the 12. Got a block as he cuts to the middle and then it breaks down. He'll get it out to the 25 yard line. Tyrell Johnson on special teams and that brings up a good point that the best players playing a lot of special teams right now coach. That was a good question. Uh, you know I've, I've been watching him for two or three years and I, Johnson and I think that he uh, you can see him right here going down. This is what he's going to make the team on. He's going to be a great special teams player. Yep. He's going to be probably a fourth round guy maybe maybe three. Uh, he doesn't have the great speed but he's smart. And he's a great tackler. He doesn't miss tackle. In this day and age, safeties are so much more important in the NFL than they were back in our days. Yeah, so that's exactly right, Coach. Running out of the 4-3 defense, ASU looking at Visa. Back to throw. Plenty of time. Swings it up. He's got it to the far side, and he gets to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald knows what to do with it after he catches him and does. After the 35, and he leaves bodies strewing all over the field, simply trying to catch him here. Take a look at the replay again, uh, spreading this field all over the place, and here's the crossing route. And the Fitzgerald has been an amazing story, former walk-on, and now he's at uh, over 90 catches this season for North Texas. Larry, I know you got some folks in the press box you want to visit with. It's a real pleasure to have you up in the booth, and good luck to you, my friend. Well, thank you all, and uh, it's a kind of a sad night for me, uh, but uh, y'all made it enjoyable for me. and. Uh, I'll miss the Indians, but I appreciate y'all being here and having me on. Thank you. Success of Arkansas State. Much of it belongs to Larry Lacewell for his great job as a head coach here for the Indians. Thank you very much, Larry. It's North Texas trying to get another first down, a second down, and they needed about three or four yards. They'll get it up the middle as, again, the carry by Thomas. Jamario trying to put some uh, numbers together here for this game to help them on the ground. Interesting note, Coach. We expected a lot of passing as far as touchdowns concerned. We, of course, have had uh, four touchdowns in the first half. One here all have been on the ground tonight. <laughs> you talk, and again, I, you know, I really thought and special teams have been reversed what they thought they might be. So it's been kind of crazy <laughs> like that. I think it shows I, what kind of expert I am. <laughs> I, we, I said at the first, I thought we had an interesting game. We do know well, it. Well, yeah, this is going to be a great football game. You can see it coming. First down and 10 to go for the Mean Green. Folks back in the Dallas market watching our telecast tonight is they'll streak it to the outside. And again, one of the things to consider when you look at uh, this team for North Texas, not only can they run the ball well, as they've already proven tonight, but again, we haven't even seen the best of their passing game. No, we really haven't. And again, that was during uh, Tony making a, a, a nice play on Visa in the open field. But uh, I scratched my head now if you're trying to look at this North Texas offense because uh, they really, really give you a lot of problems and now tight end in the game which is a, a little bit unusual for them tight end they don't use much at all Jordan and Stricker they swing outside goes to Fitzgerald well what a great talk we've talked about uh, Fitzgerald throughout the entire broadcast former walk on broke virtually every record at North Texas with 18 catches 327 yards against SMU in the second game of the season. And again, so far, Visa 14 of 17 for 111 yards. Coach Dodge looking out of the sideline. Uh, let's see if he makes an audible here. You'll be able to see the signal. There, there, there they're looking over. He's looking at the defense. No, nope, no audible. Let yeah. it run. Let it go. Well, Texas bluffs two or three of the linebackers up in the slot. Visa waits for them to get back in position, then gets a snap. There's a rush off the corner, but he throws a strike to midfield. Well, that's the example of what we talked about, Sam. Uh, third and two, uh, and, you know, they are very proficient at making those quick throws, even against a blitz like that was. They, the quarterback gets the ball out of his hands, and they're very proficient at converting those situations. That's why third, you got to get him in more than third and five. 478 passing yards against the Navy last week. Throws this one, a bullet coming to Jackson. And Brandon makes a nice catch on just a little slant in, and he gets a, another first down as they move it down into the 39-yard line. And this is the passing game that we thought North Texas would execute throughout the game, and they used it some of the first half, but now they're going right back to it again. Yeah, and, and really, uh, again, Coach Dodge, uh, let's see if he leaves this play on. Nope. There's, there's a hand signal. 
There's another one. So Visa has picked up two signals there. He drops back back in the pocket. Over the middle. It's knocked down. Great defensive play again by ASU as that one's knocked away. And Kyan Burns. Burns. Kyan Burns, uh, he's a safety, but he plays the nickel spot and gets in there going against Fitzgerald in the slot. This is man to man. That is a nice job by Kyan Burns, the second leading tackler in the history of the Sun Belt. Mandola was the next man back at number 39, had that one gotten loose, but a good job again by Burns to knock it away. Second and 10 for the main green. A keep by Visa, knocked off his feet. Nice job as he tried to clear the line of scrimmage that time. McKinnon made the meets a catch again, also coming up to make the stop again. He got a host of a lot of his friends. Number 27 coming in, that's uh, Marquette Williams. I haven't seen him, a freshman redshirt out of West Memphis. First time we've seen him in the game today. Uh, again, that's because of the dime defense. Uh, now, here we go. Third and 11 now. Let's see if they can get him off the field here. Visa doesn't get an audible this time. Drops right straight back to throw. The ball is free. It's on the ground. Still being advanced. It'll be North Texas picking up, but it won't be enough for the first wow. down. Well, they got a big Thomas made the fumble recovery, gained some yardage off of it. That'll bring up fourth down and kick time, unless they want to go for a long, long field goal. I, I, I don't know if this, I think this is Carrington that gets the football here. Let's see if we can see. Yep, there it is right there. Carrington did a nice job of reaching in with that big old right hand, swatted the ball out. That's twice now tonight he's done that, and they're going for it here on fourth and about uh, a long seven. It is. So Tupelo, Mississippi's Carrington makes the last play. And now there's going to be a flag at ASU are trying to encrench across the line of scrimmage. Got caught. That won't be enough for the first down. It'll bring up fourth down and even shorter yardage now for North Texas unless he was drawn off. Yeah, let's side. see if he might have been drawn off by the left tackle. As again, the linebackers were nudging right into the line of scrimmage. And again, Mr. Leffler and company discussing here. Offside on the defense. Number 27. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Well, Williams has uh, been the forefront of a couple of back-to-back -back plays here by <laughs> yeah. Arkansas State. That one, the one he's probably not as proud of as the other one. Fourth down short. They'll need about two. Boy, and and the, these two-yard conversions are really, uh, they are very, very proficient at doing this. Uh, they are in this offense. Let's see what they can do now in this fourth and two. Five wide receivers spread them out all the way across the field. And Beza, of course, can run it right up the middle. Second audible coming here from Coach Dodge. Dodge ball. But there's the defensive audible. He's hit from behind. The pass comes away to Fitzgerald down to around the 30-yard line, but not enough for the first down. Boy, credit a great job that time by Flag, who caught him from behind just as Fiesel was releasing the ball to Fitzgerald, made the catch. Yeah, this has to be a bust in protection because Flag is unblocked. And, uh, and again, you see him get hit from the blind side just as he was released from the football. So again, you see a great catch by Fitzgerald. It comes up about a yard short. But North Texas up, it's bogs down, but at least they go for it on fourth down. They've got the lead, 21-14 on the road against the Indians. What if there was a better way to get where you're going? A simpler way, with more control. At the new regions, we're all about making it easier for you to reach your goals. It's time to see what it feels like to have the wind in your hair and a bank by your side. Regions, it's time to expect more. What do you think of Mike Wallace and the Geico Chevrolet? Whatever. He's out there selling car insurance. I'm out there to win. Isn't he your cousin? I didn't say I wouldn't go fishing with the man. All I'm saying is, he comes near me. I'll put him in the wall. But you don't race in the Bush series. Listen, go kart trick grocery store, those remote control boats. When it comes to Mike Wallace, the story ends with me putting him in the wall. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Climb through the ropes and get in the ring. 
Because SNY Sunday Night Fights is your weekly main event in the city that refuses to sleep. Landing every jab, uppercut, knockout, and body blow. The contenders for sweet science glory step onto the canvas, and SNY is your ringside seat to see who will stand at the end. SNY Sunday Night Fights, every Sunday at 8, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. If you or someone you know are one of the quarter of a million Americans with a spinal cord injury, the United Spinal Association is here to help. We've been improving the quality of life for people with spinal cord injuries for more than 57 years by assisting with quality health care, employment opportunities, adaptive sports programs, and accessible transportation and housing. For free membership and information, please call 800-404-2898 or log on to www.unitedspinal.org. Well, a young man who's been named by ESPN Magazine on their all-district, all-academic team, Brian Flagg, also playing a mighty good defensive right end tonight for ASU as he helps the defense get the ball turned over first and ten for ASU. They, by the way, have thrown to four receivers tonight. They've thrown to as many as eight in a game, and a total of uh, eight out of the last ten games, they've had seven receivers. So, you know, they've still got some unused uh, commodities as they just get the running play with Arnold. 21-14 again. And here's that pressure again coming by and just totally unblocked. Yeah, totally unblocked. Uh, they obviously busted the protection up front. And uh, that was a crucial fourth down. Uh, you know, where it turns it over now to ASU here. So Arnold's carry as he busted out for about uh, five yards makes it second down and five. Hey, Arkansas State starting to spread the field a little bit with three wide receivers to the left wide side of Corey Leonard. Leonard set out one of the series. Hewitt took over. And now they try to get the ball on a slant this time to Arnold again. And he gets it across the line of scrimmage before Chapman's able to latch him down defensively for North Texas. Another full blitz, uh, North Texas. They are continuing to bring it. Again, if they if they blitz that much, then at some point you're going to get another double-level route to Dijonette that they beat him on the first time. And Chapman has had a good, good night tonight for North Texas. ESPN Plus presents Sunbelt Conference football tonight from Indian Stadium in Jonesboro, Arkansas, along with a coach, Doug Graber. My name is Sam Smith. Last time you'll see this field known as Indian Stadium. They are retiring the name here after this game tonight. There's Leonard throwing it out to the far side. It's complete. It's brought out of the backfield. And the young redshirt freshman makes something happen as he catches at the 40 and takes it all the way to midfield. And that was going to be close for a first down, but he made something out of this. Yeah, Leonard here makes a very accurate throw right there. Beautiful throw. That allows him, gives him the opportunity to make a cornerback miss. And that was Bush that missed the tackle there. Coach, they like the way this kid catches the ball. He came in with 13 catches, 115, and a touchdown. And he's already had a big night catching the ball coming out of that backfield. That is his fifth catch of the night. Now, I think personally, though, he could grow his hair just a little bit longer. That, he'd, he'd inch up your list. Oh, he's, he's definitely a nominee for next year, for sure. Here is a Leonard back to throw. Pocket breaks down. Leonard's in big trouble as he just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. And he falls squarely in the middle of the A here as Gilmore was the last guy to finally drag him down. And I know that's one thing that Coach Roberts is going to look at in the offseason and Doug Roos, the offensive coordinator, are the amount of sacks. And, and I think they're going to have to get Leonard to make quicker decisions and get the ball out of his hand. So it'll bring up second down and 10. You see the numbers there on uh, Corey Leonard, first half, 129, 4 of 5 for 53 in this half. And he's going to throw another rocket to the far side, in and out of the hands of Dee Jeanette, and that is very... Unusual for him. Just had the ball squarely in his midsection, but could not hang on. Well, that, that's a terrific play by the corner. Wonderful, wonderful timing on that. He got there just as the ball got there. Uh, you got to give the North Texas defense credit on that one. Good throw, good execution, better job by North Texas. So as you see, DeJanet coming back to the huddle. By the way, the center Heath Lockley out of DeWitt, Arkansas. After the spring, the coach had uh, given him what was called the Academic Excellence Award for his way he kind of accepted the system coming out of the spring ball and thus the starting role at center for ASU. Here's the big rush put on again. They swing it out to Preston Brown. He's nailed by Holman after he drops the ball. Again, trying to run a screen against straight man-to-man -man blitz. 
And uh, the advantage goes to the defense. Take a look at it here. See, it's man to man. So he's he's all over the back right there. They even had he caught it, he was going no place. Coach, that was another one of those situations, of course, with the pressure put on by North Texas. Kind of took a little timing away from that play. Yeah, absolutely. Again. You know, you want you want them to be in the zone when you're running a screen. Fourth down, ten to go. Kick time. Strabel will hit another good one to the far side. He'll watch that one as Roman watches wow. it go into the end zone. Took a perfect. North Texas bounce rather than an ASU bounce out of bounds. And it'll be North Texas ball at the row 20. We return to Jonesboro in a moment. Every day at Golden Flake, it all starts with a special premium potato that longs for something more, more flavor and more crunch. Seeking a life of delicious variety and guaranteed freshness in every chip and every bag. That's what Golden Flake brings to the table. For us, these are the good times. Finding our way to your neighborhood grocery and into your basket headed home. Turning potatoes into the life of your party. Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. Hey, Jets fans, here's your shot at an SMY Jets All Access Pass. Attend a live taping of an SMY Jets studio show. Get four tickets to Jets Browns on December 9th, including pregame on field passes. You want the access? Log on to SMY.TV today to enter and win. Turn up the volume on Jets Open Mic, presented by Motorola. SNY puts you in the front row. For Coach Mangini's press conferences at Hofstra. You won't miss a word, you won't miss a thing. Mondays and Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m. only on SNY. Well, North Texas will take on the ball on their own 20 yard line, leading 21 to 14. Upcoming, our schedule brought to you by Havoc. Looking ahead for Saturday games, Florida Atlantic will play the University of Florida at the Swamp. It'll be Louisiana Lafayette against Florida International, 6 o'clock down in Miami. And Monroe will go to Alabama. Don't forget about the Tuesday night game on ESPN2, Middle Tennessee, and Troy. That's a big game for but Troy. That's, that's a real big game for both teams. And if they want to have an opportunity, Troy, that is, to set up the match with uh, Florida Atlantic on December the 1st for the championship, they've got to get by Middle Tennessee. And Middle Tennessee can stay in the race with a win. They got off to a slow start before they're really bringing it on now. Here they swing it out of the backfield for North Texas. And again, their offense clicking as a flag is down behind the play and that will be against North Texas. Yeah I think this is uh, going to be another one of these wide receiver blocking the back or holes. That's one of the things that you will see North Texas doing swinging it in out of the backfield at Thomas. Well the standings coming to this weekend you've seen uh, Troy on top at five and oh FAU at four and one if both should win their remaining games in the conference they would meet on December the first. And of course, with Middle Tennessee at four and two, still very much a chance to stay That's in the a race. Yep. Repeat first down. Actually, Troy has eliminated uh, uh, Middle Tennessee, but they can be a spoiler anyway. Troy. With Boy, a victory uh, over Troy. Troy, uh, they they really uh, a nice football team. Uh, you know, Hogabook, the quarterback, has had an outstanding year. I think had he been able to play, uh, they would have had a chance to beat Georgia, no question. Yeah, they, they, they played awfully well. They yep. played them awfully well without Hogabook. Chris Jones stepped in his uh, place and did an excellent job for Troy in that uh, game against Georgia. 529 left to go in this one. 21-14 North Texas after the markoff on the penalty. Visa right behind a big wedge as he carries it out over the 20. Well, that's just a matter of getting in the wake of the Hogs and just following them, and he did all the way to the 22. Yep, quarterback draw all the way. Excellent call. Spread the field out. Get the whole. Get your defense spread from really sideline to sideline, and then give him room to operate with the quarterback draw. Menard, also Rose, Drake, Santiago, and Venegas blocking up front for North Texas tonight. We've also seen Brian Glass in the game along with Tyler Bailey. Offensive line players for North Texas doing their job. Protecting Visa on a second down and eight. 
Time to throw and he does. Swings it outside. I think that's to Jackson. No, it's going to be Fitzgerald. Excuse me. Fitzgerald makes the catch. Fitzgerald's having a heck of a game today as he continues to add more and more to his <laughs> catching ability. Yeah, there's not many where he doesn't have a, that kind of game. And again, that was a blitz. Uh, so that was uh, Tyrell Johnson who was man to man on Fitzgerald. Made a nice open field tackle. But it's third and about three. And they're awful good at these. Four down linemen for ASU. Drop the linebackers. Actually one linebacker out. They bring a fifth back and there's a Defensive play knocked out on the near sideline, and that one was very much close to being caught as Montine Harrison came from the safety to make a defensive play. And nice, he said, no, no, nice no. job by Montez Harrison. He, he read that as a slant, and he read it because of the huge split the wide receiver took. So a very nice job. Recognition by Montez Harrison. They get him off the field. Coach update on an important score tonight. Number two, Oregon, 11 to 7. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. They're playing it. At Tucson tonight. Wow. So Tucson, the Wildcats giving uh, Oregon a run for their money. LSU, of course, number one in the BCS. They play an important game against uh, Ole Miss this weekend. Expected to win there. And of course, the big game, not necessarily towards the number one or two, but Ohio State and Michigan this weekend. It is that weekend. Here's the kick again, and North Texas Spencer hits a beauty. Caught here on the near side of the way it goes to Topkins and Bernard who's already broken a single season record runs it out to the 39 yard line and ASU coach I can't tell you how many times they've had this field position between the 30 and 40 yard line and they've capitalized on the last two. Yeah and I'll tell you they need to capitalize again because uh, <laughs> you're not going to hold this North Texas defense to 21 points the rest of the game you're just not going to do it. So again uh, Leonard who. Again, was taken out of the game. Got a little hyper, I guess. I think you called it right, Coach. He got just a little hyper. Yep. Throws were coming off high. Yep. Just to kind of watch a series or two from the sideline, and now he's gone back in and done a nice job. Nice, nice move by Doug Bruce, the, the quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, getting him out of the game, just calmed him down. Man in motion as they take the tight end. Here is Leonard trying to run behind that tight end, and the block by David Johnson was non-existent, <laughs> and Boy. Leonard was just swarmed. <laughs> That was Mendoza, the middle backer, and I'll tell you, he took Johnson and swatted him aside said, get, said, out, get of out of my way, boy. <laughs> that's, wow. That's not easy to do at 6'2", 268. Watch him. He just, he just fought through it and made that tackle. Yeah, he did. That was a great job by Mendoza. Well, Mendoza comes from Hereford, Texas, where they had the Hereford cattle, you know, and he just kind of pushes that big beef around there in Hereford. <laughs> I love the names of these towns. China Springs, Texas. Oh, yeah. Hereford. Here's the snap. Second down and nine. Dejanette catches it out of bounds in front of Withers. You're a Texas boy. What's your hometown? Mine is Borger, B O R G E R. It's up around Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo, okay. Yep. We were one of the uh, 5A schools that played uh, a lot of state championships. 1 uh, 1. And uh, that was about it. Beat which, uh, excuse me, Houston Wheatley. Well, after I was gone, though. <laughs> former, uh, my broadcast partner here being a former Texas Tech basketball player, yeah, star. I threw a few in the hoop. ASU 4 for 12 tonight on third down conversions. They've got a third down and five. Leonard out of the shotgun, low snap. He may make something out of it. He does. Good time to throw, and he throws over the middle. That'll be a first down. Oh, what a nice uh, time that he had to throw that football and got it to Tompkins. And a first down here for ASU. Credit that offensive line, Coach. Yeah, nice job of holding the, uh, the protection here all day long. He kept his poise. Tompkins has really impressed me tonight as a receiver. He found that soft spot in the zone. He sat right there, gave him a nice target, and Corey Leonard finished it off. Mandich, Reby, along with Lockley, Coates, and Thrower. That's the down five. The Hogs up front doing the job for ASU on that play. Course. First and ten for the Indians. Reby, the left guard, a semifinalist for the Draddy Trophy. Here is a naked, uh, just a draw all the way by the quarterback, and that's Leonard. Won't go down. Finally going to be tossed to the turf around the 40-yard line. And again, Leonard showing a little bit of a, a little bit of a gritty here as he carries it right up the middle. Boy, the quarterback draw all the way, and again, a, a nice job up front by the offensive line. Making this stop, Cliff Higgs, who made a couple of big plays back in the first half. But Corey Leonard's got his team moving on a second down and one now. They're down by a score with 2.10 to go in the third. 
the last home game here at Indian Stadium as it'll be called something new next year. Leonard turns hands off Arnold boy what a nice gaping hole and a big game down to the 35. That was one of the quickest hitters they've had all day. Yeah, he runs a, a nice forward lean right here. Excellent job by the center right there. Heath Lockley. Wow. What a great job by him. Well, I tell you what, anytime you get those centers kind of get that influence block and just sealing off, boy, that is, that's nice to see. Yeah, that, that's a really good hole for uh, Reggie Arnold right there. And he runs with a lot of nice forward lean. You know, you talk about that forward lean. He's also got that low center gravity, yeah, he too. Does. He's tough to get a hold of. First and 10 to go for the Indians. Leonard swings it out to the far side. Get it to Chris Miller. And Miller will take it down inside the 30. Let's see where they finally spot it down to the far side at the 29. Another nice little catch and run of five more yards by ASU. You know, it, it take a look at it here again. That's a full man to man look, uh, and that's a one on one coverage out there. Nice job by Miller. And of course, that's uh, Latif uh, Nuruddin, who has really, I thought, had a, a good night at, out there at the left corner spot. Chris Miller out of Hot Springs, Arkansas, the city that's been named as the home for the Sun Belt Conference basketball tournament coming up next year. Not this year, current year for basketball, but the following year. Congratulations to Hot Springs. Here is Arnold. Arnold carries it for another first down. This is the offense we expected to see, Coach, by ASU just running the ball right down North Texas's throat. Yeah, and, and the, they've got their rushing average now. That after that play, they'll be close up to be to 4.8. For carry and take a look at this uh, execution up front. Uh, Vincent Thrower, number 72 at right tackle, really got some movement there as did the whole offensive line. So the push by ASU is taking it to now the 21 yard line of North Texas. North Texas jumping out to a 21 to nothing lead on touchdowns by Thomas and by Mosley. Brown scored before the half was over to make it 21 to 7. Arnold who carries the ball, scored here in the third quarter. To make it uh, another good game there and they added another touchdown and it is now a 21 14 game as they gain another three on the play and I in the red zone this year now uh, Arkansas State has hit uh, has scored 76 percent of the time uh, North Texas has given up scores 85 percent of the time Arnold now with 76 yards needs 27 for the thousand. Brown is back in there as he'll flare to the left side. They like to throw to him, but instead, cross the field, it goes to DeJanette, only about two or three yards out of the play, and it'll be out of bounds around the 16. Yeah, that's to be third and a, and a long four, but again, that was good timing and a good throw. Now, now Leonard, uh, no high throws. Every throw is right on the money. Take a look at this one. Good fundamentals right there, beautifully done. Yeah, that's one of those situations. The receiver, though, coaches. Got to know where those flags are. I know you're trying to look for the yep. seam, but push it another couple of yards up field yep. and you may have a chance to get the first down. Third Ab down. Absolutely. And a key one here with five needed. Leonard back in the pocket. He's throwing. It's going to be incomplete. Yep. No, it is off the ground. And a good try over there to try to sell it by Joe Smith out of Bastrop, uh, Louisiana. But again, he did not sell it well enough. Yep. And it's going to be the field goal team will be coming on. Full blitz. Didn't have a lot of time. Had somebody, you know, oh, yeah. it's really distracting to a quarterback to have somebody right at his feet oh, when yeah. he's trying to throw the football. And that certainly caused the uh, low throw right there. Well, let's see if uh, now Rocco can hit this field goal. He had his only other field goal try blocked. This will be a 32 yard try and draws his team again back within four. This time it's up. He's got plenty of leg on it. It's on its way and it is good. So a 32 yard field goal by Josh Arocco. He gets his 14th field goal of the year, and he draws again the Indians back within four, 21-17 in the third with 13 seconds left to go. And, Coach, that's one of the things with kind of staying with it. You can kind of get down on your kids, but the one thing you got to do when you come out of the locker room is that you've got to lift them up and get ready to play in the third. Take a look at this now. They're, they're trying to block this from inside. Watch the height that... Ooh, Gilmore, I mean, he's got some vertical. He got up there. He didn't miss that by much. So 21-17 on the field goal try, 11 plays. It took three minutes and 48 uh, seconds to get it all done, and they did it. 
You know, and, and speaking of field goals, Sam, you know, it's so important. That's why you have to keep a clock on these kickers all the time because, you know, they want to take just a little extra time and, and sometimes they get in bad habits in practice. And I will guarantee you that led to that block field goal because uh, th to me, as I look back on that play, now that really was on Araco. He was too slow attacking the football. So if a guy just kicks off of one of the, the, the tees that they hold up there uh, on his own, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any no. kind of time no, at you, all. You, you have to continually do that every day. The snap, the hold, the kick, and the, and the clock has got to be on them all the time to make sure they don't uh, get into bad habits. Here's Sheffield kicking again. It'll go to Mosley again, this time at the 14. Mosley out to the 27-yard line, and that's where the door is slammed. Yeah, that was a big time hit, and the flag came in late now. This may be a sideline penalty on uh, Arkansas State. I can't think what else it would be or, you know, when that flag was thrown. So it'll be a discussion going on by the officials here. Maybe a little excessive celebration. I don't know. Sideline warning, Arkansas State. Okay. Sideline warning, Arkansas State. I, I like that call. I mean, you know, the, the, and there, there's Steve uh, and the coaches. Uh, Boy, the big t big time hit right here. Wait. Good job by number 31, Matt Taylor, the linebacker, 6'3", a sophomore. Out of there they come. <laughs> and the coach. Well, oh, that was on the <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> You'll take that warning, won't you? Oh, absolutely. A warning never hurt anybody. <laughs> First and 10, North Texas. They are now leading by only four. Visa out of the shotgun. That Load was, running back. That was Tony Gilbert, by the way, the corners coach that was out there. And they give it straight ahead to Mosley. Mosley, oh, oh wow. he broke out of one tackle ahead to the 41 yard line. First and 10, North Texas. He gains 11 on the play. Boy, he just keeps those legs going. Give him 12 officially as he fell forward for another yard. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. We've got a ball game. It was 21 to 7 at the half by North Texas. But now it's turned into be another game. 21-17, North Texas leads ASU. At the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, we test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. Own a timeshare or campground membership? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one, most successful timeshare agency, representing properties from the biggest names in the industry. No one sells more timeshares. Call now and receive a free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Don't delay. Call 800-464-3216. Daily News Live, presented by City, weekdays only on SNY. 124 years of hikes, hits, kicks. First down, downtown touchdown. Wiseman, Heisman, pom poms, third and longs. Franks, passes, ascots, mascots, drives, dives, fans, bands in the stands. Two teams, both of them undefeated. Harvard, Yale, just another game? I don't think so. Harvard, Yale, live to decide the Ivy League title, Saturday at noon on SNY. To get your Sportsnet New York on the web, make your homepage SNY.TV, the online home of all things New York sports. Real-time news, scores, team pages, exclusive video, blogs, message boards, and more. Your link to every local sports section. Your link to every single New York team. Pre-game, post-game, every game. A site dedicated to you, the New York sports fan. If you want your SNY online, bookmark SNY.TV. Get your New York sports online here. Hey, Jets fans. That's right, I'm talking to you. As soon as our game is over. Switch to SNY for Jets post-game live. You don't even have to leave the couch. Just grab the remote and turn to SNY. Get analysis and all our post-game reactions. We'll be ready. 
talk to you every week with Brian Custer, Ray Lucas, and Adam Shine in the SNY studios. Listen to these guys. Watch Jets post game live after every Jets game this season only on SNY. All you got to do is change the channel to SNY. See, it's not that hard. Get your New York sports here. Well, there's five of those folks that wish it was a little bit warmer here, but at least they spelled Indians right. And the last time they were able to do that here at the home field of Arkansas State University is again they'll retire the Indian name. Others are kind of bundled up pretty good here. That's how I would be if I was out there. I promise you. <laughs> I got the long handles on tonight. First and ten to go for North Texas again, mostly. It has been he that has been carrying the load here as uh, Thomas carried for a couple of touchdowns early on. Mosley got one in the first half. But now Mosley's been the workhorse here for their offense for North Texas. Big gain of a play, and he gets seven on the play. Second down and three. Another bullet to the outside. They throw it to Fitzgerald again. First down. North Texas took it down to the 48-yard line. Uh, this looks to me like this series now. Uh, Coach Dodge has said, okay, now we're going to come out and run the Indy pace. This is their really fast-paced offense. Look, they're up on the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. ready to go already, getting their formation lined up. And the most of the times when they go at this pace, they probably are not going to call audibles. Coach, five running touchdowns and a field goal. I got a feeling the team that throws a touchdown pass may win this one tonight. And you know Dart Texas is capable of doing that, but so is ASU. Handoff Mosley. Won't get anywhere. Good job as they lined it up down the middle, and the defensive tackle made the middle as that's Curtis Bond, one yep. of the 17 seniors. Young man from Sam Houston and Dallas Texas that of course uh, makes the big stop here. Great penetration right there from the backside. He, he slanted inside on the guard beat him cleanly. 17 seniors introduced before tonight's game. Of course given their just due for their great play here for the Indians under coach Steve Roberts now in his sixth year. Part of his recruiting classes. Here's the throw to the outside and just in and out of the hands of Fitzgerald. Tyrell Johnson. Well, you like him really well. I really, you know, as a as a lifelong secondary coach, and I, I, I take this guy in a heartbeat. That's a nice burst right there, and you know he gets there in a good, uh, ugly mood. I, I like him a lot. Coach, one of the things about a defensive back is got to have such balance to react so quickly, and he yep. certainly has that. Doesn't he? he really does, and he's got nice size. Oh, excellent special teams. Uh, he, he, he'll play. He'll play on Sundays. Third down, 11 for North Texas. Giovanni Visa throwing to the outside. That'll be incomplete. Oh, the flag boy. is down. Mm. And they'll call this one an interference to the outside. Montez Harrison. I, I don't know. I, I thought that was a, a pretty good play by the corner. This is close. So again, that would be just at the stake for the first down on the third down. Pass interference on the defense, number 20. That's a spot foul, automatic. First down. Well, young man from uh, Smiley High School down in Houston. Got the contact, this is the ball got there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's close. I mean, that, that's easily uh, one that could have gone either way. You know, Harris is one of those guys, he qualified for the state meet in the 200 meters with a 21-5 excellent speed and acceleration by Harrison, but Again, got there just a little early, and it's a first down for North Texas. 13-44 left to go in the game, 21-17 in favor of the Mean Green. Giovanni has time to throw. Looking, looking. He throws the slant, looking, trying to get it down the middle again to the young freshman who'd run a nice route to the inside. And again, uh, Dybra uh, tried to get inside, but just... Uh, Dude, that one uh, pretty much inside, never had a chance to even get to. Well, it. you know, he, he was well covered, and Darren Tony showed his, uh, you know, his experience right there as a senior. Uh, the ball was not catchable, yeah. and he just kind of stayed right where he was. He no hands on him, uh, you know, didn't panic. Second down, ten yards to go. Let's look, and here's the audible coming from the sideline. Steve Roberts in this stadium. It'll be retired with a name anyway of Indian. 21 and 7 since he took over here now in his sixth year. So they are tough at home. This is uh, Biza. He's got some running room down to the 25. And that'll be enough for another first half for the Mean Green. Boy, this kid is some kind of runner. 
from Alamo Heights in San Antonio. Anytime you think you get a model, he squeezes through it. Watch this play. This is a follow play. He fakes it, then they pull the tackle around. And he just follows that big old tackle right up through the hole. First and ten for the Mean Green. They try to add a score with 13.27 to go. Coach Dodge giving a audible. He's a passing along to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the wide side left. Hand off up the Look middle to out. Mosley. Good move by Mosley. Micah cuts to the outside down around the 13 or 14 yard line. Boy, I tell you what, he did a great job when he felt the contact. He just bounced to the outside for 11 big yards. And Mosley out of Needleland, Texas, gives them another first down. Yeah, that was on the safety, Evan Van Dolan, right now. You see the numbers 62 points, three, uh, 635 total yards last week, 21, and just nearly 300 yards so far. Offensive machine for North Texas slowed a bit here, but now they're starting to crank it up again. You know, I can remember if I gave up 300 yards as a coordinator, I'd about ready to kill myself, you know. Now every, that's a good game. That's right. There's one well overthrown over Fitzgerald. Yeah, and, and, uh, and a late flag came in, and V supported to himself and said, that's on me. That was a bad throw, one of the few really bad throws he's had tonight. So again, we'll see what Mr. Leffler and company have come up with. Maybe for illegal formation. It's nope. a hold. Holding on, Abate, I think you got to take this one. So holding is the call on that first down and 10 at the 14 yard line. You saw Mr. Leffler look to the Arkansas State sideline and they said, absolutely. Yep. And now there's some discussion about that. Hold on the offense. Number 85. That's a 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. So it'll be first down in 20. You know, Coach, we were talking about Troy and Florida Atlantic. And, of course, Troy, their only remaining uh, conference game outside of playing Florida Atlantic will be against Middle Tennessee next Tuesday on ESPN2. FAU that has to play at Florida in a non-conference game this yes. weekend, their only game is against FIU, and that'll be our television yes, game next week. Be, absolutely, next Saturday. So, one yeah. of the last games in the Orange Bowl. And if they win that one, uh, it, referring to FAU, it will be the showdown December the 1st at Troy. For the berth in the New Orleans Bowl and possibly a berth in another bowl as the Sun Belt tries to get two teams in the bowling again. This is to Washington. And Washington, who had normally been one of their top receivers, comes out to make a catch here as Corey had come into the game with 28 catches for 323 yards and three touchdowns. Makes his first catch of the night. Yeah, you know, to, of course, that's that's a pass and it's a catch. But really, that, that, that's the same as a toss sweep. I mean, you know, you get, that that's that's really all that is. Uh, you know, it's a wide receiver screen or a toss sweep. It's the same thing. The wide receivers are blocking the ones they got a guy running behind them. Debrell, who has been a favorite target of uh, Visa's flank to the left side. Washington, who made the last catches in the slot to the right. And Mosley stays in the block in the backfield. Second down, 18 yards for the main green. Blitz, blitz. Here they come. Visa throws it off the back heel. It's in the corner of the end zone. Knocked away incomplete. Harrison make the play defensively for ASU. Well, the senior really, again, has showed his poise and patience. Uh, no interference. Did a nice job of playing. Good read by them. Nice job picking up the blitz. This is well played on both sides of the football. Well played on both sides. Got his hand right off the top of the helmet of one of the players here, and now he's going to kind of shake that yeah. baby. Oh, boy, that does sting on a yeah. freshman in a cold day like this. And it is getting colder. It's not around the low 40s right now here at Indian Stadium. And now North Texas with this third down and long yard situation want to take one of their three timeouts here in the second half. And you really can't blame them because this is a really, really important series. This is a huge. They're up by only four points. There's the standings we made mention, Troy, with, again, the game coming up next Tuesday on ESPN2 against Middle Tennessee. They don't play this Saturday. FAU, a non-conference game at the Swamp. Boy, I tell you what, they've done a great job down at the FAU. Coach Schnellenberger is doing an excellent job. And, of course, Larry uh, Blakeney and Troy have really done their yeoman work to get these two yep. teams where they are. I may mention Middle Tennessee is out of it. Uh, if they win, you can see Troy with a 5-1 and one record. Yep. They still have them out of the race. Arizona now has taken the lead on Oregon, 24-11, 11-24 to, wow. to go in the second quarter. <laughs> 
You know, wow. Uh, how, how many number twos have uh, gone down? I mean, obviously, there's still a lot, a, lot, lot to, a lot of time in that game, but, boy, I'll tell you, being a number two right now is not good. Choice Hotel's next telecast coming up next week. The coach and Eric Ritchie will be in the Orange Bowl as it's Florida Atlantic going uh, against Florida International, the battle for the blagging rights. And, of course, that comes up next Saturday. Check your local listing for time and station in your market, all presented by ESPN Plus and the Sunbelt Conference Network. And there is one of the pageantries you will see for the last time here at Indian Stadium. That's the Indian family as they will be officially retired, at least for home football games here after this game tonight. You know, and it was kind of neat at halftime, Sam, when the, the Indians made their final appearance at halftime. Yep. And boy, the cameras were snapping and everybody was taking pictures. But it, it, like Larry said, it is kind of sad. Larry lays well in the booth. This is Visa. Visa's got some running room. And oh, he takes a beating. But that's the kind of player he is that's as he close. goes into. I think he's got it. And he dives ahead, getting it down inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. Boy, he is a tough kid. I tell you, take, he knows where he's got to get. He fakes it right here. Boy, he sells it out right there. <laughs> wow. Williams made this stop here, number 27. And then McKenna gave him a pretty good shot while he was windmilling in the air. That reminds you of the John Elway Super Bowl right. hit. That's exactly what that looked like. Well, they don't make the first down, obviously, so it'll be a field goal try. And it's going to come from the 18-yard line, and the kick is up, and it's good. So North Texas with Thomas Moreland putting through a field goal, his seventh of the year. And again, that ups the lead to 24 to 17. It's still a one possession game to keep this baby close with 11 to go. There's an easier way to get where you're going in life. Even if you're starting your second one. At the new Regions, you'll find more support today for the tomorrow you're dreaming about. Isn't that what you should expect from your bank? Regions, it's time to expect more. games continue on SNY. I'm Kenny Harkin. Welcome to the street. This week, we head to Keyspan Park in Brooklyn to turn back the baseball clock and play the old ball game in old-time style. Then pick up the ball if you've got the guts. Throw it, catch it, go one in and one out because it's time for some dodgeball. The home of all things New York sports brings you the games from the streets of New York. Street Games, presented by Pontiac. Tonight at 10 p.m., only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Hey, look, it's the Subway Big Philly cheesesteak. Can we get one? Not now. Chris is late for his practice. Oh, come on. It's got their new juicy steak and double cheese, and you know how I love cheese. I want that sandwich. I want that Subway sandwich. No. <gasps> oh, that's real mature, John. Yeah, Dad. Grow up. <clears throat> you grow up. People really, really want the Subway Big Philly cheesesteak, piled with tender Philly-style steak, loaded with double cheese, and then fresh toasted to really satisfy. So good, you'll beg for more. Pick one up today. Bob of the coach, Doug Graber, Sam Smith joining you back at Indian Stadium here in Jonesboro. You see the score, 24-17, as North Texas has it. And, of course, the fans still waiting to see the outcome of this one before it's all over. Major Hal, our producer, handling a great crew here in Jonesboro. They've been laboring to get us on the air, of course, as they always do so well. And they'll be here long after we're gone. Coach, tearing this thing down. So we salute them in this cold weather. Always a great job from ESPN+. Plus. We really appreciate their hard work. And a special salute going out to Jonathan Willard, who's our statistician here. Last time we worked with Jonathan here, he's from Belleville, Arkansas, and he gets an A+. Plus. He's our MVP so far this year, Coach. He's the man. He is the man. North Texas kicking off. And once again goes to Topkins. Topkins will have a full head of steam as he reaches the 30 and gets out to around the 36-yard line. Now, you talk about adjustments. We talked about the offensive line coach, Darren Hiller, he, of course, was talking uh, early at the side of the bench and now handing out 
some of the instructions here on that line really did a good job. Coach. Nice job. Uh, much, much better in the second half. Uh, had problems with the blitzes. Got the running game going, really coming off the football right here. Nice gaping holes, you know, for Arnold and uh, Preston Brown. Excellent job by that guy right there, Darren Hiller. He gets a A-plus for his effort here tonight and his adjustments in the second half, much to the chagrin of North Texas. 11 minutes to go. ASU with the ball, first and 10, and they get it at their own 36-yard line. A touchdown away from Ty Nisbaby up. Here's the ball tapped in the air. It's going to be coming back for a catch as Tompkins. Tompkins will catch it for a couple of yards, maybe, if he was able to hang on. Yeah, no, they say it's incomplete now. Yeah, it's incomplete. So he had to come back out of that ball, was batted out at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can see who got a paw up right here. If this was, uh, no, that was the outside back or that, yeah, that was uh, Craig Robertson. Nice job by him. Good job reading the quick drop, settling. Good vertical. You know, Craig Robertson has been put into the lineup, you may recall, at the Monroe game to get more speed yep. and pass coverage. Just a redshirt freshman out of Stratford, Texas, replaced Brandon M uh, Monroe, who had been a longtime starter for him. Another ball bat in the air. And, and Robertson guess what? picked it up. It comes another one here, and he gets another big intercept here. So Robertson, the man we talked about, not only made the first hit, but now he comes up with a big intercept and a turnover, gets the ball back in the hands. That was uh, Chapman that got up and got the tip, and now Holman, I mean, uh, Robertson was in coverage and a good pick. Huge play in this football game right here. Robertson, by the way, comes up with his fourth intercept of the year, Coach, wow. as a linebacker. Wow. My, oh, my, oh, my. This young man from Stratford's having himself quite a first year for the main green. 10.47 left to go. They got a field goal the last drive. Now they'll try to go to the juggler here. And get another touchdown if they can inside to Thomas. Thomas drags the tacklers along as they try to penetrate inside. And he said, well, if you'd like to go for the ride, here we go. Yeah, that was Williams. And again, that's the disadvantage of running the dime defense because you have defensive backs, uh, quarterbacks in most cases playing that nickel and dime spot that have to make tackles on pretty good sized running backs that are running north and south. Second down, five and a half, nearly six yards here for North Texas. They'd like nothing more than to wind a lot of that clock down and make this drive to the end zone. Visa again, leading the read. He'll catch it for a couple of yards on the carry right up the middle. And that was just quarterback draw all the way. And that is going to set up third. And, yep, it's about four and a half. It's inside that five number. Again, we saw the numbers earlier in the game. North Texas, who leads the conference in the time of possession. And again, they've had that ball a lot here tonight. They've got 24 points to show for it. You expect more, particularly as much as they've had the football tonight. Give a little credit to ASU's defense for not having more on the board. They swing it out to the near side as Visa is starting to get right on the money again to Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald rolls inside the 30, and that'll be enough for another first down. That's why they're so good at converting those situations. Just a quick little option route to Fitzgerald right there. That's one of the reasons Coach Dodge wanted to get him inside. He is so, so proficient at finding those spots in those zones. He ran that little inside outside option and uh, in a great throw by Visa. And he's had himself quite a year has Fitzgerald. Over 1,200 yards in receiving this year. And there is again Thomas, Jamario Thomas who carries it down near the 20 yard line. He touched in around the 21. And again, their offense really becoming more balanced uh, just about every game we see them play, yeah, despite they, the fact that last the, week. Yeah, they've run the ball well tonight. And, and I'll tell you, uh, Thomas and Mosley have been a really good combination. To, but, you know, they've alternated, but a uh, little different kind of backs. 8.50 left to play in the game. There's the checkoff with uh, Visa. Fitzgerald now with a total of 10 catches for 46 yards. These are now 20 of 28 for a buck 46. They gets ready for this second down play. Short yards needed for three. And they I don't think they got that one off. At least the play clock was close to zero when they on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Main second down. You know, talking about Fitzgerald, it's kind of funny, really. You know, we think he, you know, he's having a good night, 10 catches. Yeah. But you know, he's 75 yards behind his average. He's averaging 125 a game, only 46 yards tonight. 
It's almost like he's got a shadow on every time no, he just, on that little short pass. Well, you know, Arkansas State has done a nice job. There's Fitzgerald ready. He's split to the right side of the blitz. Visa. He's looking for him. Visa coming to the outside. He's going to keep it. He'll take it down inside the 20 near the 19. He'll rule him out at the 20. And down with a good carry, but it'll bring up third down and, yep, short yardage again for North Texas. Well, you know, that's the added dimension. And they came with a full blitz and uh, the outside rusher, a loss contained, and you just can't do it against uh, these North Texas quarterbacks. They run too well. Here again on the handoff, and again, no place to run right in the middle of the line on that third down play. It'll bring up a fourth down, and they'll still need about two, two and a half, as Owens, the middle linebacker, really stuffed that one in, and Ben out of uh, Bearden, Arkansas. 11 tackles against Troy for his season high, came in with a total of 77 tackles, one of the top men in the conference with that one. You know, these middle linebackers, they hate playing these spread offenses, you know. They're out there playing basketball all night long, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me somebody to to hit, right? Yeah, you give me a guard or give me something to, to go after somebody. Here's a 38-yard try. It's up by Moreland. It's got plenty of leg, and it's up, and again, it's good. And that is a big play for North Texas, and the fact now it's a two-score game for ASU to come back in this one. So another good kick here by North Texas. Thomas Moreland, 27 to 10, a 10-point game. North Texas with the lead. Seven minutes to go from Jonesboro. Kari Rigg is a real Geico customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell her story, we hired Peter Frampton. My car was totally smashed in an accident. No, a great way to start the morning. And the tow truck that the police called damaged it even more. I wanted to pull my hair out. Geico handled everything quick and easy. It felt great. Do you feel like I do? Geico. Real service, real savings. Every day at Golden Flake, it all starts with a special premium potato that longs for something more. More flavor and more crunch. Seeking a life of delicious variety and guaranteed freshness in every chip and every bag. That's what Golden Flake brings to the table. For us, these are the good times. Finding our way to your neighborhood grocery and into your basket, headed home. Turning potatoes into the life of your party. Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. I'm Kellen Clemens, and you're watching SNY. Get your New York sports here. Welcome to Verizon Fios. It's pure, undiluted movies, music, and sports. They flow on light straight to your home. 100% digital fiber optics makes videos and music come alive and takes high-def TV to a higher level. Movies and exclusive programs are at your fingertips. Record a show on one TV and view it on any other. And you don't just watch sports, you feel them. With picture clarity that's unmatched anywhere. Send photos from your PC to your TV. Play games at blazing speeds on the fastest internet connection available. The network we call Verizon Fios. Get Fios TV, internet, and unlimited calling for less than $95 a month. Sign up now and you'll receive a free sharp 19-inch LCD HD TV. Call 1-877-444-FIOS. Verizon Fios, the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. Well, the fans are looking on. Most of them, of course, ASU fans. Their team is down by 10, 27 to 17 as Bernard Tompkins gets ready to receive this kickoff from uh, Thomas Moreland, who's put through a couple of very nice field goals here in this fourth quarter. Tompkins waiting back number 14 has had seven kick returns of 30 yards or more as long as being 53 against the University of Louisiana Monroe and he needs a big one right here to get them some better field position they kick away from him they'll go to the far side to Tony Tony will take it to the outside Darren he's got a good he's got it outside to the 35 to about the 37 yard line so we have it Tompkins can't do it Tony can well, another field goal by North Texas. Coach, it's set up by the intercept. Yeah, nice job by Chapman. And, and of course, our guy uh, Robertson finishes it off. And the field goal resulting from Moreland makes it a 10-point lead by North Texas, trying to look for only their second win of the season. 
And again for Arkansas State four and six coming to the game tonight looking for win number five and it's going to be an uphill battle now still time with seven minutes to go though. But well, this has been problematic uh, you know for Arkansas State this year they had a chance uh, to, to beat FAU last week uh, down there and just couldn't make the plays late in the game. Let's see if they can get them tonight. Leonard throws after getting hit from behind and turning for Dejanet. It's going to be over his head and incomplete. They'll bring it back for a second down and 10. As again, uh, Leonard throwing deep. By the way, we've had an update on the score. Arizona 31, Oregon 11. <laughs> Unbelievable game down in Tucson. Coach, with that said and done, LSU Ole Miss, Oregon, Arizona, Kansas, Iowa State, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, Missouri, Kansas State. Those are the top five teams that will play. Which one of those teams win and goes to the championship game? Uh, I mean, if I had to pick talent, I would have to say it's Oklahoma, yep. in my opinion. Oklahoma, of course, a great game also. That Missouri-Kansas game should be a dandy. Here's Leonard running out of trouble, trying to outrun the lineman, and he does a first down as he steps out of bounds. Well, there's that little bit of uh, what we expected from Leonard Moore of tonight. We've already seen it from Visa, 16 yards, first down, ASU. Yeah, this is the added dimension that both of these quarterbacks tonight bring to the table. Uh, nothing there, but, boy, he's got the feet and the speed to make something happen. 16-yard gain. So the ball creeps into North Texas territory, 6.45 left to go. First and 10 at the 45. Now Leonard checks off from the sideline. <laughs> Both teams now getting the audibles from uh, the box in the sideline. Wide receivers, two split to the wide side right of Leonard. On the hash mark, far side from us at the press box. Leonard, quick look in. He's got it to Dijanette. He breaks oh, one tackle oh. ahead to the 30. And they've got another first half for ASU. Boy, was that quick bang, 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 a nice job with 15 yards. It was, and that was against uh, straight man-to-man. -man. And again, they get it out of there quick, take a nice split, give yourself room. If you can make somebody miss, you got a chance to go the distance. Robertson took the last shot at him, but Dijanette was already down. First and 10. Ball is now just outside the 30. North Texas leading by 10. ASU challenging here. Leonard back in the pocket. Got it. Looks over the middle. He's got it. Knocked down incomplete. Oh, oh my. Leonard They're playing some deep uh, pocket that time as Aaron Weathers, the player that was expected to be one of the top players in the league, but has not played Come up on. to his potential this year. But that's the kind of play they expected him to make. Well, you know, this is not a good throw. He had it wide open early. If he throws the ball on time Aaron earlier and gets North it up North. over the top, he's got a touchdown there. No question about that. Nice recovery by Weathers. Trevor Gillat was the intended receiver at the goal line. Brings up a second down and 10 now. Clock stopped at 623 to go. Leonard into Brown. Preston will gain about three. It is thrown Preston back. Brown All of this is using up some time with 6.15 and counting here. Well, the ASU trying to mount an attack here to try to get back in the game, down by two scores. Of course, and you've got to get a first down here. And, and really, you're in four down territory all the way. I don't, uh, you know, of course, you could take the field goal here if you had to, but boy, you sure want to get the touchdown on this drive. Throwing a situation, looking for his 19th reception of the night. He's got it, and it's good. Down to the 15 yard line and takes all the way down to the 10. 218 yards, tack on another good one to Tompkins there with 16. And again, another first down here for ASU, and now they're challenging again. This is Tom Tompkins' best night as a receiver, in my opinion, for Arkansas State. He really looks comfortable out there now. He's into his sophomore year. He's been more of a return guy, but he's learning how to be a, a, a wide receiver. We'll check Tompkins' numbers here to see what he's done as a receiver tonight here. But Leonard has uh, looked at him as a favorite target tonight. First and goal to go. At the, just inside the 10. We'll call it the 9. Leonard, time to throw, looking. They throw the fade to the corner. It'll be just out of the outstretched hands that time. I think of Chris Miller it is. And that was Weathers that really made, a, again, another nice recovery on that play. That one again, Coach, was on a line. A little air might have done that one as well. Yeah, and again, the timing. The ball should have yep. been thrown earlier. That's the biggest thing I see right now with Corey Leonard is he's just, you know, we talked about earlier about slowing the game down because he's he's rushing and it, it just things are not happening on time. So it's second and goal to go. 
Those are the football and most of the football just inside the 10 yard line. Lockley the center will snap it back and he's got it right on target to Leonard runs away from traffic. Those a little side on the near side he's got it it goes to Gallat. And he will be out of bounds after making the catch at the six. See and, and Gallat would have been uh, it, it, you know well advised there to turn to turn it up the side. Now watch this right here. Now this is the scramble. Watch him scramble to his right. Now the wide receiver right here could have turned it up the field and might have had a touchdown. Nine catches for 70 yards for Topkins tonight. Boy, this is a big third down play. Topkins is a lone wide receiver, wide side left. Two running backs. Now one goes in motion to the near side. That is Brown. Corey Leonard fakes the run. He's going to just try to angle in the end zone. Touchdown, Got ASU. It. And they threw to the big tight end. Tight end, JT Jordan. They had tried to use the tight end, David Johnson. Jordan comes in and makes the catch. The young man from Monticello gets his touchdown. And now they're going to get the extra point up. And now with 5.15 left to go, they are back in the game again. Great throw right there. He put it, he, he gave him just enough height. And, and he comes down and he's got the football. That's a touchdown. Jordan at 6-1, Mendoza, the linebacker at 6-1, a pretty good jump ball. We might get, be getting a replay on this ball. They might be reviewing it. The ball was well, the, on the ground. Was it brought on by contact? Again, you know, they have to have uh, evidence to, to overturn the call. It was called a touchdown. Right there, you see the signal. Mendoza trying to wrestle it away, but it is now gone to the replay booth. Did he have possession when he hit the ground? By the way, I thought he did. Credit the Sunbelt Conference. They were trying to use their own uh, cameras. They had one down each of the goal lines, yep. two in the end zones facing, of course, each other, and one in the press box. They used five. They realized that sometimes they just didn't get the best, so now they've asked when they are televised, as they are here, that we furnish them a feed. So what we're right. seeing on our television, along with their five, is exactly what they're making the judgment with. Well, this is a different angle now. Let's see if we can see anything different right here. Mendoza really fighting through to try to knock that ball loose. The official right on top of the play made the call in the back of the end zone. Yeah, you know, that official, Sam, ha had a, has a better view of that play than any of the cameras. I, I would be really surprised if they overturn this call. Nine plays, 61 yards if it stands up. And more importantly, Coach, it took him only a minute 46 to go. Let's see again here. Look at the official right there. He's in perfect position to see it. He's looking right at it. He throws the arms up right there. There's nobody in this house that had a better shot of that yep. than he did. And, of course, the North Texas fan said, hey, it was on the ground. But keep in mind, the minute he hits the ground in full possession of the ball, then wrestled away by Mendoza, which could have very easily been the possibility there. Right. Uh, that's what that official on that end line was looking at. And uh, Mr. Leffler, the lead referee tonight, is certainly conversing with all of the people on the field here. And, of course, the replay booth to make uh, sure this one gets exactly right. Well, the season After is not over for either the team. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So, touchdown. Nice job. Nice job, officiating crew. So, a little six-yard toss that time coming from Leonard to Jordan, the big tight end. And it brings it with the extra point still to come here to a 27-23 score with ASU trying to make a comeback out of this thing. The kick is up and the kick is good. So it's a one possession game now, 27-24, as we've got a three point game going in Jonesboro. More to come, Sunday Conference Football presented by ESPN Plus. What if there was a better way to get where you're going? simpler way with more control at the new regions we're all about making it easier for you to reach your goals it's time to see what it feels like to have the wind in your hair and a bank by your side regions it's time to expect more sportsmanship is essential for all of us because we are defined by how we treat others and character counts for everyone 
When you demean your opponent, you also undermine your accomplishments. So always show respect for your opponents and the officials. And win and lose with class and dignity. Then regardless of what the school board says, we're all winners when we display good sportsmanship. People are smart. They know the less money they sink into their mortgage, the more money they'll have in their pocket. With our Sleep Easy loan, you get a 30-year fixed rate that lets you pay interest only for the first 10 years, with no negative amortization. So you can borrow $200,000 for about $999 a month. Call the number on your screen and you can pay down your bills, purchase the home you want, or just walk around with pockets full of cash, if that's what you're into. So call us now. Ditech. People are smart. Coming up on Geico Sports Night, busy day off the field for baseball. Barry Bounds gets news that might affect his playing future. And are the Yankees any closer to locking up A-Rod and Moe? Geico Sports Night at 6, 10, and 1. The offseason is here, so it's time to heat up the hot stove. SNY checks in every week as the Mets fill in the blanks and put together an amazing 2008 roster. Mets Hot Stove, presented by Chef's Diet, every Monday at 6.30 p.m. with an encore at 11 p.m. only on SNY. This ESPN Plus Sunbelt Conference game is brought to you by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. By Golden Flake, the official snack of the Sunbelt, the original potato chip of the South. By NRG, unleash your body's full potential with NRG's Phoenix Fury Potato Chips, the new breed of energy. By Choice Hotels International, wherever the game takes you, we are there. By Gatorade, the question is, is it in you? And by Havoc, disrupt the ordinary. Well, you take a look from inside the teepee here at uh, Indian Stadium. And as a Native American, of course, a great history coming to a close here at Arkansas State. And again, they will retire the Indian name here officially after this game tonight in football. They'll carry it through the basketball season. But again, it'll be all over this year. Sheffield kicking off for Arkansas State. He kicks to Mosley. Mosley will have a good run back here from the 12. Up to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and finally rolled out of bounds around the 37-yard line. Great return again by Mosley there. Running back behind Thomas. He's done a lot of yeoman work tonight, and now he gives North Texas excellent field position. Coach, this situation more Texas obviously used the clock and eat up some yardage. Well, even though there's five minutes left, it's really a classic four-minute situation. Uh, you know, obviously stay in bounds that they'll have certain plays that they'll run. I'm sure we'll see some quarterback draws, things like that. What you don't want to have is incomplete passes, that's for sure. But you know, this offense, I mean, there's not a lot of incomplete passes in these uh, all these uh, spread the field quick throws. Two Thomas Borland field goals as North Texas in the lead by three. This is Mosley. After the great kickoff return, he goes right back to work and gains three. Yep, and, and stayed in bounds, clock running. Mosley out of Needleland, Texas. Of course, a great runner who was there. He had over 2,400 yards and 29 touchdowns his senior year. Rice for nearly 4,600 yards in his career at Nederland. You know, and according to the clock now, Arkansas State has two timeouts left uh, that you normally would not use those until you get inside under four minutes or three minutes. Second down and eight. Swings near side to Washington. Washington wrestled and knocked out of bounds as coverage now by Arkansas State. How tight can you play this coach as Burns is the man that makes the stop there? Well, you got to play it tight. I mean, you, you cannot, you know, I mean, you just can't give him a first down here. And here's what you'd like, third and about six now. Huge, huge play right now, right now for Arkansas State. Four down linemen, two linebackers, the rest are D-backs spread across the field with a spread offense in North Texas. Here comes the blitz, and they've read it, and now they're going to audible to the blitz look. Now, and now, now Arkansas State audibles and goes back to cover two. Now, there's the timeout. Yeah. That's exactly the chess match that was going on. So Visa didn't, didn't like that. And again, uh, didn't like it at all, as Visa again has to call the timeout, and again, using up I believe that may be the next to the last one there for North Texas. Tyrell Johnson has had himself a whale of a game tonight, Coach, and well, the three scouts downstairs got to get an eye for He really has had an outstanding game. He's made a lot of big plays. And this guy here, is, uh, he's, not, 
He's not made the uh, the 99 yard plays like he has, but he's had still, I think, 10 or now maybe 11 catches. These, by the way, coach, are your potential uh, MVPs and players of the year. You saw Fitzgerald, you saw Dawkins, uh, uh, again, the Dawson, again, the running back for Monroe, and there, of course, is Hogabook yeah. from Troy. I think, in my mind, those are the top, uh, top three possibilities. Here, you take a look at it. Uh, who's going to be the offensive player of the year? Well, a couple big games to go yet, but uh, boy, those are three pretty good ones right there. I tell you what, I wouldn't be uh, going against any one of those guys. As uh, ASU has had 400 yards total yardage, 331 for North Texas. So a 27 24 game put some uh, total yardage on the board. Not what we've seen record wise by North Texas or for that matter ASU, but good steady offense tonight by both teams. Visa after the timeout throws the little score wow. to the far side and Fitzgerald makes a great catch and a super leap over the equipment boxes across the way. Well, you know, at that time now they, they went to a cover two and uh, and that was exactly take a look at it. And boy, I tell you, this young freshman quarterback makes a clutch throw right there for a crucial, crucial first down. Right up by Burns and by Johnson as well. And again is ready to go for another first down play. And Arkansas State may not have gotten oh their boy. last man off the Oh home. boy. Here's a big run by Mosley. They will not take this penalty. They'll take the play as they'll run this down to around the 25 yard line as the 12th man for ASU was hustling to try to get off the field but didn't make it. Well, that's one of the things that this offense does to you. I mean, they knew that that guy, they were trying to make a change and he was trying to get off the field. They snapped the ball. I mean, they control what you do. If, you know, they play with their offensive personnel. Illegal substitution yep. on the defense, 27. That penalty is declined. First down. As Williams again, but again, they decline that. 22 yards on the run by Mosley again. See, what happened there is they had the dime defense on the field. Yep. They tried to get the, you know, their, their linebacker on the field because they came out with the tight end and they got caught. They simply got caught. Mosley's had a good night tonight. We'll check his numbers as well as he's really kind of carried the load here with Thomas doing a little bit of the work there early on in the first quarter, Coach, but now he has turned it over to Mosley here in the second half. Yeah, Thomas, a couple of nice rushing touchdowns early in the game. Mosley got the other running touchdown in the first half for North Texas, and he gets another running play here. Boy, I tell you what, when he reaches that edge and once he gets he's contact, quick. he's a load. He is quick. He's a true freshman from uh, Netherland, Texas. And, uh, you know, Todd Dodge had a had a a tough job to do. He just had three weeks to recruit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after he took the job before the national signing day. And uh, look at the freshman speckled uh, throughout this lineup. He came up with some good ones. How about this quarterback? That's a pretty good one right off the get. Absolutely. For a player of the year from San Antonio, Alamo Heights. 67 yards rushing so far from Mosley tonight, and he stays in there on this second down in short yardage situation. Beza taking a long count, using as much of that clock as he can, gives it to Mosley. He'll push it ahead to the nearly the 14 yard line, which would be enough for the first down if it gets to the 14, but it's got to reach the stripe. Yep. And it does. First it's a first ten. down. Well, now you, you really have to start uh, thinking about using some of your timeouts, Arkansas State. So they'll be at the 14-yard line. A first and 10 to go here. Visa and Mosley stay in the backfield. Wide receivers split to the left side. This ball should not be snapped unless there is under three seconds to go in the play clock. It's eight, seven, six. Nice job by the freshman quarterback. Beautiful. One second to go on the play clock. And they hand it off again to Mosley as he runs that little slant. Stopped by Ben Owens, the middle linebacker. But made the defensive stop for ASU. Gain it two. And now timeout's going to be taken by Arkansas State. Well, the defensive players, Coach, uh, you've got an idea of who those players might be as well in Middle Tennessee. Well, you know, uh, Jones is uh, just uh, uh, all over the field. Tavares Jones from Middle Tennessee. And, of course, uh, this guy right here, Leonis McKelvin, is a big-time player. He'll play in the NFL. And our guy right here, Tyrell Johnson, uh, I, I really like him a lot. He's a great person on top of being a great player. He's got a future as well. 
Coach, I'd, I'd like to add uh, Tavares Polo, who has seven intercepts for Troy, yeah. as another very good candidate for a defensive player of the year. I tell you what, we've had some good defensive players this year, that's for sure. Well, you know, the Sun Belt has had some outstanding uh, kids the last four or five years that have gone on to the NFL, first round draft picks. Uh, you know, Troy certainly has had their share. Uh, the fullback from here last year, uh, uh, made it uh, with uh, Warren O'Neill with the Oakland. He went in the sixth round last year and made it. By the way, interesting comments. You've talked a lot about uh, Johnson, of course. Larry Lacewell said a probably a fourth round and he'd make it as a special teamer. Yep. And then, of course, work himself into a defensive spot. So, nonetheless, the three scouts downstairs have gotten a good eye look here at Johnson. And I'm sure they've also put a scribble down a couple of names here from North Texas as well. Visa. On the carry, really took a hit, getting up a little slowly now inside the 10 and another timeout by Arkansas State. Well, the candidates for the player of the game, and again coming up, uh, Gilmore, who's been all over the fort, he hits the ball in the air there. Well, actually, Chapman and the intercept, but again, Gilmore, another big block well, he's, there. He's made a bunch of plays tonight, too. Whack! That oh, was man. Mr. Gilmore. And again, he's been uh, <laughs> named tonight as our NRG Energized Player of the Game. And again, Gilmore, who has had himself a big, big game here by North Texas. And again, he's a guy that uh, has done a good job in the fact he's moved by Blake Burris for the starting left uh, tackle spot as he was in the number two spot for most of the year, but moved ahead of Burris, who's actually a very good player. Yep. Which means that uh, Gilmore has really stepped his game up here for North Texas. You know, you've been given a great deal of credit, obviously, for Ron Mendoza. One of the big raps on uh, Coach Dodge was the fact that he brought so many high school coaches in. I know you got to start somewhere, but again, you want to sprinkle some of those guys that have been there and done that. He brought a lot of high school coaches in, including Mendoza, and it's been kind of a growing process for him as well. Absolutely, and it is a big difference. Third down, guess what? Five to go here for North Texas. They've had a couple of field goals. This is Visa. And they're going to go with a fourth down, and they'll have to go for another field goal, but they angle it right to the middle of the field. Ben Owens making the stop on that play. Well, you know, the field goal team is not out there yet. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. You know, they, they may just let the clock run down here, uh, take a penalty, then hit the field goal. Now here comes the field goal team out now. So Thomas Moreland, who's hit a couple of field goals tonight so far, for North Texas, 28 and 37 yards, will try to get his third one of the fourth quarter. And that would up the lead. Now keep in mind to only a six-point lead. And yep. there is Moreland. Seven, five seconds to go on the play clock. Got Matt, it off. Matt Phillips, the third quarterback, is holding, and he's going to hit it, and no good. Whoa. So he misses the field goal, and now it's a three-point game with a buck 18 to go. And now <laughs> it's going to be Arkansas State with the football and a lot of real estate to try to get a score of some kind, a field goal to tie it and a touchdown to win it. Yeah, you know, there's no doubt in my mind there that, that the uh, the kicker, they kind of get out of whack, you know, when you try to do something like that, let the clock run down and yep. kick it at the last second. I, I think that was a big factor there. So Moreland goes two for three tonight. And now it's up to Corey Leonard. His team will have it at the 20-yard line and 80 yards of pro green turf here at Arkansas State to eat up. He'll have Preston Brown in the backfield with him. His wide receivers, doubles on either side. Well, you know, what else is new? Another Sun Belt game going down to the final possession of the game. Defense for North Texas needs to dig in. Here comes Leonard on the run. He'll get down to about the 31 yard line, but he uses up the clock. And he'll stop the clock to move the change and then reset it quickly. And Arkansas State has to get in there quickly. They want to spike it here, even. North Texas kind of running a. Actually, very slowly defensively to the blind of scrimmage, and now they'll whirl it in at a buck nine. Leonard on the snap. Three men rush for North Texas. Plenty of time Got to it. throw. Dijonette out of bounds at around nice. the 41. Nice. That'll be close to a first down, but nonetheless, he's out of bounds. Yep. Stops the clock with a minute one to go. Right. This is the uh, dreaded uh, prevent defense here with the three man rush in a three deep zone. Uh, you know, certainly don't want to get a throw down the field. That's our all hair MVP, by the way, Rowan back there playing uh, in the secondary for North Texas. And again, if you're wondering what that's all about, of course, some guys in the league had a little longer here than normal. 
And Roman was named as our MVP tonight for the long hair and the hair team of the Sun Belt. Second down and short yardage here. Did get out of bounds with a minute one to go. Leonard this time steps up in the pocket. Now he lets throw. It's going to be incomplete and almost intercepted. Oh, what a great play right up the middle that time. And they got Holman, got his hands on it, but just knocked it away. Leonard is thrown for 259 yards and 50% on his passing. And, of course, he's had a, a couple of them intercepted here tonight. As again, he'll let fly, and that one came close. As Dean yep. Jeanette almost let that one get well, away. Dean Jeanette is capable of making that play. Yep. Uh, Third down and less than a yard to go. 54 seconds left to go. Three-point game. North Texas jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead. They'll get the first down, but will have to use up a timeout as Brown will carry it to the 49-yard line. No timeout. They don't have a timeout. You're right. Going to have to spike it here. Come on. Get to the line. So the clock will roll a minute. The ball is set, and the referee rolls it in. Leonard out of the shotgun with 48 seconds no, left to play. They're going to run a play. 27-24, Leonard looking to try to eat up some real estate, taking a lot of time over the middle. It's tap and again, almost had the intercept by Holman. He had his hand on a couple of balls tonight that just would uh, have sealed the deal here, but that time couldn't hang on again. Well, the reason the linebacker is so, uh, so deep in coverage there, he, he's got the deep hole in that cover two coverage. Mendoza was the middle linebacker that knocked that one away. And you can see Holman, the other linebacker, almost came up with what we call the Husky and was going back the other way if he made that one. They really need at least 20 yards here on a chilly night to have a legitimate shot. Well, Rocco's longest this year has been 45 against Texas. Here's Leonard over the middle of that one. Oh, my, right off the hands of Tompkins. Sure-handed receiver would have had a first down around the 38. And that one, he just took his eye off of that one, Coach. Uh, again, trying to run with it. Uh, this first play, he looks like a young player here because not only, a, well, that's a great throw, but he also had a chance to do a lot of running after yep. that catch. And nobody more disappointed than Tompkins after missing that one. Stops the clock with 33, showing with a third down and 10 here by ASU at their own 49. Wouldn't be surprised to see him coming back with the same play with Tompkins uh, crossing over the middle. Three-man rush. That's what it is. Of time, and here they come over the middle. It's tipped again and then caught. But that's short of the first down, so this clock is... It's down at the 20... Well, actually, they stopped the clock. And they are now North Texas saying, hey, that clock's got to be running, and it does. And if it... Oh, it's a first and 10. It is so a it first. is a first and 10. They actually had the ball at the... About the 42, and now they move it to the 41, and the chains move. They need 15 more yards to have a legitimate uh, shot. 20 seconds left to go. Leonard swings it over the middle. This time he gets ahead. It goes to Brown. Brown all the way down, down to the 26-yard line. They'll have to go in a hurry here after the chains are set. Only 13 seconds left to go. They'll have to spike it now and get the uh, field goal team out there. 16-yard uh, rec reception there by Brown. And now they back the ball up again to the spot for the linesman at the 27-yard line. And Leonard, as the clock rolls at 11, yep. will now just spike it to stop the clock with 11 seconds to go. Now, Coach, you've got 11 seconds. You are probably not in the field goal range as of yet. Very close, well, though, with you're, 45. You're close. To me, I thought they had to get to the 25-yard line yep. to, to have a legitimate chance. Let's take a look at his numbers. He is... Uh, He's, yeah, he's keep in mind, he had one blocked earlier yeah. today, Coach. They're going to take one more play here. This uh, this better be a quick, quick outcut, or they're, or they're not going to have time. So Leonard looking over the middle, not the place you want to look. He's Get now to the sideline. Now he's going to throw into the end zone. It's going to be Caught. touchdown! Oh. ASU! Two seconds to go. Tompkins. Tompkins. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Tompkins with a touchdown. Whoa. Leonard bore all the time he needed behind that offensive line that retooled in the second half. And now with only two seconds left to go, the extra point would make it a 31-27 four-point game in favor of ASU. And Indian Stadium may be going out on a high tonight. Well, again, the legs of Leonard made it happen wide open. It, uh, nothing breaks down the coverage faster than the quarterback scramble. 
wide open coming across the back of the end zone. A rocker will put the final point on the board in Indian Stadium as he puts it up. 31-27 and a kickoff you know will not be making too much airtime from ASU on the ground and they'll eat it up in North Texas who came to Arkansas State and put on a whale of a show will be dropped in the final moments of this one. And Tompkins give him credit coming right across the back of the end zone looked he looked that one in didn't he? Remember yeah. He dropped a couple earlier but he surely looked that one in. Look at this celebration going on. <laughs> Get off the field, get off the field. That's right. <laughs> my, oh my, what a finish tonight. Boy, you got a feel for the North Texas uh, team. Uh, they came in here and played so well. They went 80 yards in a minute 16, coach, in 10 plays. And no timeouts. And no timeouts. Unbelievable. What a, what a play. 31 27. Again, the Indians again trying to close out this. Last night at Indian Stadium, it will be renamed something else in the next months to come. But the TP will be taken down, the Indian gone. And you know, North Texas may have felt like they just got a tomahawk in the back of the helmet. And I just watched uh, Steve Roberts, he had his hat off and he was holding his head. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Amazing. They have had some marvelous comebacks in the. Uh, <laughs> the history of this man's uh, tenure at Arkansas State. Now Mosey looking to heaven saying, if that ball ever gets to me, which it probably won't, it will not. Well, maybe it will. It does. Nice bounce to Mosley. They're going to. Oh, here we go. Up. Razzle, here we dazzle. Go. There goes the second uh, lateral. They'll try to lateral again. It's on the ground. And this game is over. Well, maybe. And now it's over. And Arkansas State has prevailed 31 <laughs> to 27. Coach. What a football game. What a way to finish out Indian Stadium here. My, oh, my, oh, my. Well, Steve Roberts will get a big victory tonight again as he comes up with another big one. His 31st as the head coach yet at ASU. A disappointing loss for North Texas. The Eagles played very well. Mean Green played well. Well, they played great, and especially their defense played with such effort. And a, a tough, tough way to lose a football game for them. Well, again, a great game here tonight at Jonesboro. Our final score, Arkansas State 31, North Texas 27. They score with Tompkins on the final play. Join the Sunbelt Network for our own Thanksgiving feast, Miami style. It's the Battle of Miami as Florida Atlantic goes against FIU. They face off November the 24th at 7. This is the last game of the Orange Bowl. You can check it out right here on these great stations. For information, check all of the information from sunbeltsports.org. We'll say so long for tonight. From Indian mascot into you tonight. For Doug Graber, this is Sam Smith. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody. Street Games, presented by Pontiac. Visit deals on Pontiac.com. Pontiac, designed for action. Welcome to a new series that will uncover a different breed of athlete, one who doesn't play for the money or the fame, and whose stadium are the streets of New York City. Why don't you come along for the ride, because this is Street Games.